I've been muted this whole time. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> welcome back, everybody. <laughs> welcome in, Elven Hair. Druid, welcome in. Sorry, I went to get a glass of water. And forgot to unmute myself. We did it. <clears throat> We're back. Look at all those buttons. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing all right. I preloaded myself with aspirin, so hopefully I won't dip out of the stream nice. in the middle. I was, again. I was thinking about doing a workout today. So maybe I should do my stretches before we start. We'll do. We'll do push-ups for monies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one push-up per dollar. I don't foresee me getting thousands of dollars, so I could probably do that. But it has been a while. It's been a while. I did 20 push-ups the other day, and it almost killed me, so... Oh, no. Yeah, gotta get back into it. Yeah, you used to be able to do, like, 50, no problem. I think the highest we ever did was, like, 400 and something. But that's back when I was doing, like, 5 per dollar or 10 per dollar. Yeah. It was something crazy. Because we were doing it with, at TikTok, too, so it was, like, bits. Every time somebody gave me bits. Right. Which are, like, pennies. I think you mean Twitch, not TikTok. Did I say TikTok? You did. It's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same and nothing matters. So. <laughs> How are you doing today? You said you're feeling better? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit better. That's I'm good. super drained, though. Like, dealing with chronic pain yep. just sucks all the energy out of you. So it is, it is amazing what a hernia surgery will do to you. Like, like oh, oh. <laughs> I was in pain for a very long time. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Imagine that. Yep. Jordan, welcome in. Cleaning off my glasses here. I think I need to clean my microfiber. Like. Yeah, same. It says you're not supposed to wash them. But, uh... I don't know. I guess I just buy new ones every year or something. Maybe that's what I need. I need a Rook brand micro <laughs> microfiber cloth to clean my glasses. Now I can write it off on my taxes. Have you ever been to a luck event? Um, no. I'm just going to say no, but that's only partially true. Because, like, I've been to, like, small Renaissance fairs. And Idaho used to do this thing where the, uh, uh, the Shoshone? They used to do, like, a Native, uh, Native American powwow thing, I think is what they called it. I don't remember what they called it. It was not super, like, culturally sensitive, but this was also, like, 30-some years ago. Yeah, um, in Idaho. In Idaho, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was a thing for, like, elementary school kids where everybody went together in there. And did that, so that's that's probably the closest thing I've ever been to a LARP event besides like a, like a Renaissance fair. Um, have I ever like played a, a LARP or a, a, an Arma thing? No, I've never done that. Um, I used to sword fight a lot though, like through the school and with, just with people I knew. So I got pretty good at that. Did you did you do um, what is what's the acronym European? Yeah, Life Amp Guard. Works. No, I didn't do Amp Guard. I had some friends that did, and like I fought with them, but I never actually went to any of the events. <laughs> I'm kind of a homebody, is really what it is. Yep. Um, Same. Yeah. Thinking about that that thing I went to now as a kid, I think it was hosted at Lewis and Clark Middle School, which I don't know if that makes it worse or better. <laughs> Maybe it makes it in. more understandable. Yeah. I know in Washington have pretty big... Um, I don't want to say representation because that's not right. Like, I don't, University of Idaho has a Native Studies program, and like they go through a whole bunch of different. Um, I don't know. I don't know the right words to talk about this because I want to be uh, polite about it. But Idaho and Washington both have very large communities of um, of, of uh, First Nation and like a Native people. Uh, which I, I really appreciate, and it's great. And you can you can like, go to a lot of different 
events and, and cultural things for that. Uh, and me growing up, that was great, but it's still very much, you know, outdated from what I was growing up. So, uh, yeah, there's some really cool stores and stuff in like Pike's Place that only feature native artists. Those are really cool. I like those a lot. Uh, I'd probably be a musketeer. My loadout would include four pistols, a sword, and a knife. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've never done. I've never done it, so I don't know what I would do. I'd want to do like. Uh, I'd want to like bring the gut sword, <laughs> just twirl it around. <laughs> <laughs> have you Have you seen um, some of the guys on on like TikTok and YouTube Shorts who are uh, like they've been training with big old? I think it was cardboard at first but they yeah i think i know what you're talking built about big old buster swords and have been and you just kept waiting it yeah yeah i did that when i was a kid they've been they've been like exercising with them i say kid i was probably so i i used to do that <clears throat> um i started with like wood and i worked my way up till i had a big steel pipe and then uh-huh. i uh <laughs> I swung it wrong. It bounced off the ground and just like jabbed itself into my ribs Oof. and cut me up real bad. And I still have a scar from it. And I was like, well, I'm not doing that anymore. Like there's a point where it's just like, that's too much weight. Uh, but yeah, I was not as strong as those guys and I was young and stupid. So got to be careful. Uh, still, still fun. Still fun. I probably jumped the weight too high, too fast. Probably. I actually watched a um, uh, I can't remember what what degree they had exactly, but it was it was some sort of physical science degree or not like not not physics. It was a, a exercise science degree. Oh, okay. Uh, and they were actually uh like reviewing one of the one of those guys' workouts. Mm. Uh, and uh, I learned. Something that I did not know before, which was that um, that type of training, especially where you take uh, weight at the end of a, a long pole and like swing it mm-hmm, back mm-hmm. behind your head, um, that was basically like the ab exercise for uh, like old school, actual like gladiators and, and fighters or yeah. engineers. I just saw stuff. I just saw a tiny like short of that the other day, so it might have been from the same interview, but there's like a clip of it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was just like, "Huh, in. cool." Wait, was that from yesterday? That was from yesterday. I don't know why Discord just popped that up. That's super weird. Whatever. <laughs> Get your shit together, Discord. Yep. We've been having some weird Discord issues playing Hell Divers, and I don't know if it's Hell Divers or Discord. But, like, one of my friends will get kicked out of the call, and then he'll still be in the call. And we're just like, what's happening? He's like, I don't know. Everything got really, really loud. So I jumped out, and then I came back. I'm like, yeah, you're not in the call. And he's like, that's weird. <laughs> and so it's just like, that's how we have to play Helldivers every time. That's we get Helldivers. He has to leave, come back, and he just doesn't exist in the call anymore. But that's super strange. Jump Rope was having a thing where we called we called the group and uh, hung up on her because she wasn't here. And she's like, my phone wouldn't stop ringing. For ten minutes it wouldn't stop ringing. I couldn't I couldn't shut it off. I had to like smother my phone and I was like, huh. <laughs> what are you doing, Discord? What's going on over here? So Interesting. Yep. Completely anecdotal. No idea. When our tech malfunctions. Yeah. The more the more complex stuff gets is is, is our tech malfunctions. The worse, the worse, and more difficult to troubleshoot the problems get. Can you imagine when things are like physically integrated? My uh, arm, my no, arm just why wouldn't stop. I'm, I'm never going. <laughs> why I'm never going to get chipped? I mean, you say that. You say that, but just wait. Just wait. I've got, I've got so much weird plastic shit in my body. I guess yeah, but most of that is is because of the microplastics that. That's true. Just kind of exist in our world now. Dragon turtle, welcome in. 
because people are terrible at cleaning up their shit and uh, uh, industrialized companies have no scruples. Yeah. I had a knife collection and I recently had a minor accident with my one. Oh, yeah. I can't remember which hand. Well, that's good. That means you healed from it. <laughs> I have scars. <laughs> I have scars that I uh, I know exactly how I got them, and they will probably never go away. <laughs> if that makes sense. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of tech priests, <laughs> yeah, right, Tides. I was I was having a conversation with them going through my eye surgery. They're like having this eye surgery because I had to have two of them. Like essentially, every time we do this, it hastens your your need for. Uh, how do I say this? Instead of it being like, if you do the surgery, there's a chance that you will get cataracts. It uh, it just increases the speed at which that happens. Because everybody gets cataracts eventually. <laughs> I'm like, and like, I didn't realize that until I, I went through the whole whole rigmarole. And they're like, no, 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 no. Like, you might just have to, the surgery might cause like a 10 year progression of your cataracts. And I was like, that sounds like a lot. And they're like, yeah, it's not. <laughs> like, it's fine. Uh, Sigh, welcome in. So, yeah. <clears throat> Pretty much everybody one day will have robotic eyeballs. That's all I'm saying. That I do believe. I suspect I'm more likely to get a cobalt hip replacement first. Yeah, that's true. I think my grandmother, who is uh, pushing her way towards towards the centurion, um, is... Uh, I think she just turned 90. I should say that. She just turned 90. I think she's replaced both knees, both hips. <laughs> and is walking like way better than she has in the last 20 years. So it's like... You know what? Sometimes you just gotta just accept the accept the robotics. <clears throat> to my knowledge, my immune system doesn't really know my eyes exist. That's good, and or bad. I'm not sure. You want a cold kobold to donate a hip? I'm sure kobolds just have extra hips laying around. Probably, but there isn't usually much living flesh attached to them anymore. At least the way I put kobolds. Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't want the living flesh to be put into your body. Well, think. no, but you mm. well, you you do need the marrow to be alive. No, well, not if it's a replacement. But you don't put you don't put marrow in a steel hip. No, but if you're getting a transplant, then if you're if you're transplanting something that was once alive, you want it to still be alive. No, Otherwise, sure. it causes necrotization. Bones are weird. Bones are 100% weird. Here's a hip. Did you know cataract surgery has been around since the medieval period? Didn't you, yeah. uh, I'm not going to read that, but that's fine. Interesting. Would a clean bone be broken down by the body without marrow? Mm, ooh, I don't believe so. I don't um, think so either. Yeah, because like there's a handful of, of things where like, you can live without a percentage of your bone marrow. Um, and then it, your bones don't like die because of it. Because really the bone marrow just generates blood. It just creates blood. Um and so your bones are your bones are a living thing, regardless. Uh, so a dead bone, I think, just wouldn't wouldn't regenerate and be more fragile than than other other parts of your body. Bones are weird. Bones and teeth are really weird and really cool because they are constantly regenerating. Like not your teeth aren't, but like your teeth are constantly moving because every time you chew, it like slowly degrades the bones around your teeth, and your teeth are just like yeah, it's fine, and the bones just keep re regrowing. Um, it's great. Makes our teeth work real good. There is a, there is a certain amount of remineral. Yeah, if 
your diet isn't too bad here. There is a certain amount of remineral remineralization that does happen naturally, just because uh, of the minerals in your saliva. Yeah, yeah. That, but I, I, back in the day, I had a dentist. Uh, not dentist. He was kind of a weird, kooky doctor. Had me taking calcium pills to make sure that my teeth would be healthy. Um, <laughs> because he was his argument was, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I went with it. <clears throat> that if you have a high enough concentration of calcium in your body, um, it'll be in your saliva, and that'll remineralize your teeth. And it's like, cool, that sounds right. And then now in my older age, it's like, that that could be why I have kidney stones. <laughs> yep. Rick sounds like a witch doctor. Yeah, I don't take calcium pills anymore. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I had a pediatrician who had my mom giving all of us, uh, like, a fluoride supplement. Yep, yep, that's still a thing. Wait, like a pill yeah, supplement? But like a pill supplement. Okay, like that's weird. Having a, yeah. Um, and then a little bit of research that might be one of the triggers that caused my uh, autoimmune problems. Because mm. I thought they tasted good and may have overdosed. Interesting. Which is really bad because fluoride is extremely reactive. Yeah, which the reason that a lot of the United States doesn't do that is because we fluorinate the water yep <clears throat> which makes like that's that's enough fluoride for most people and then that's why the dentists like will coat your teeth with fluoride or have you do like a fluoride wash but when i was little especially in idaho like not all the water was fluorinated and so we had to do like mouthwash yeah. things every week at school um for the same purpose just like to fluorinate your teeth yeah but uh it's amazing how much a little bit of fluoride can actually like super improve your teeth health like that's really yeah. cool but yeah, too it much of it is, is a bad thing. Cool. So, I was actually really it's, sensitive uh, to it, so it made me kind of sick. But I didn't like doing it. So part of the healthy teeth, even as an adult, is to drink lots of milk. It can be. Milk is is a weird thing, um, and minerals are a weird thing because, from my understanding of it, essentially, uh, you don't need to take vitamins unless you are deficient in something, and it's really hard to tell if you are deficient in something. <laughs> so, drinking milk is a great way to get extra vitamins in case you are slightly deficient in something but um milk is generally generally good for you just because it has it's it's you're digesting it in a way that is proper versus just like taking large doses of something and so your body yeah. will essentially leach out what it needs and just discard the rest so yeah. milk also to, like milk is literally designed to be a thing to to nourish life yeah. to provide everything <clears throat> uh, uh a growing body needs. That being said, um, it is weird that we drink milk later in life. Yeah, yes. super weird. It is very weird. Um, especially drinking the milk of other animals. So, is milk healthy for you? I don't know. It's food. It's healthier than other things. <laughs> but also, should you drink it? And, I don't know. I can't. So, I'm and your more. small intestine uh, process lactose and lactase. Yep. Because if not, then no, it's not healthy for you. Yep. I'm not a doctor. I'm a tiny dead bird. So, you know, do what you will. There even, there's actually some people that have, like, you might see people with, like, white spots on their teeth. That's either fluoride or cal calcium uh, deposit depositing. Like, they have too much too much fluoride or calcium in their body. Yeah. And it will, it will leach into your teeth and cause spots. It's always been my understanding that you don't actually want much fluoride in your body. Like, you want almost no fluoride in your body. It's most helpful, like, as a rinse on your teeth. Yeah, which is why it's, like, small, small doses of it in our water is, like, just enough to help. Like, <laughs> you yeah, don't... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... And, why, and the reason why it was really weird that I was given chewable or, like, uh, capsules mm -hmm. to, like, with the intent intention to swallow them as a kid the medical supplements industry is awful especially the unregulated ones yeah. well most of it's unregulated most of it is unregulated yeah <laughs> I think I'm done with this rugby I think I'm ready to start drawing 
<clears throat> Sounds like a witch well, doctor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I decided to be dumb and do a dynamic pose. <laughs> no, don't do that. So I may take a while on this warm up. I think I will. Nice. I take care of your teeth, people. Just That's all I'm saying. Take care of your teeth. One of the most important things. And one of the things that can cause you the most pain when you don't. Unfortunately, like, a lot of take care of your teeth is really, like, uh... Just don't eat that much sugar. <laughs> yeah. Which is a bummer. Sugar's great. You know what's in milk? Uh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Man, when I was a little, I think, like, the thing that probably did not help me was, uh, like, Nesquik and... Oh, goodness, yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah, I'll have a glass of milk. That's healthy for me. Let me add two giant spoons of chocolate sugar, please. Like, that wasn't great. It made me drink my milk, so, like, that is good. But, uh, also sugar. Twelve. I rolled a twelve. Halfling monk who learned airbending and is wielding brass knuckles with elemental powers on them. All right. This is a robe made out of tree bark. Uh, I don't know what that would look like. Would it still be soft? The human body is very mm. strange. In some ways, it is so advanced, and in others, it's dumb. Same for human intelligence. Yeah, I used to make an argument that eyes were really bad. Um, like, the human eyeball is kind of like, you can trick it really easily. But it's still, like, one of the more advanced eyeballs. Um around uh, I say that because like it's it's versatile enough to do all the things that humans need to do whereas a lot yep. of a lot of other uh, creatures are specialized in something so in that way they're better but they're much worse than others so it's like the human eyeball is kind of middle of the road because we do so many different things and it's advantageous for us so it's a sad day that we can't see ultraviolet spectrums but eh, whatever I mean <clears throat> We haven't needed that until we got technology yeah. advanced enough to uh, produce ultraviolet spectrum stuff, so. Well, so like birds, insects, and a handful of fish, I say fish, like ocean-dwelling things, uh, use it. Use the ultraviolet spectrum. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's very... It's not great to have it all the time because it's basically too bright. <laughs> so, for low-light things, it's really interesting. Especially for color. We don't communicate with our eyeballs that much. We use our face. Mm -hmm. We use our face instead. Which is cool. Not too many other animals do that. Yeah. It's like lizards and bugs. They don't use faces. <laughs> no, well, not even other species of ape or monkey are as emotive yeah as we are. I, like i was reading something that like that's one either a dogs learned to to understand emotive because they've been around humans for so long uh -huh. or one of the reasons that dogs and humans started coexisting is because they both had that trait like which i think is kind of interesting um Best explanation I've heard for human evolution was environmental conditions changed so fast evolution basically threw their hands up and said, fuck it. It's your problem. I'm just making smart and adaptation figured out. I mean, that's all evolution does. <laughs> that's literally all evolution is. It's just throwing its hands here and saying, fuck it. Let's see what, let's see what happens. Uh, go play Darwin's Demons. It's a great game that I helped make. <laughs> and it explains evolution pretty well. Um, yeah, I, I I'm I agree with you. Like you can't look at at um, uh, the the vampire finches uh, uh, on um, the, the Galapagos Islands and and tell me that that wasn't nature just being like, eh, that's better than starving. Fuck it, we'll do it live. I love evolution. Evolution's great. Partially because cool. I, I studied it for so long at the school yep. university, but 
The dogs emoting thing, I'd say that they aren't mutually exclusive explanations. I mean, they could both be true and both be partially true and both either be true. Like, it could just be a coincidence. But uh, it is, yeah, very much so dogs can now, like, emote themselves with their face. And that's just, that's something that's kind of unique to us and primates and, for some reason, dogs. Because, like, wolves don't do it. Like, it's partially a learned nope. thing. But... Um, which is why people think that it might be might be more of a trait that we just bred for because we passively understood like, oh this dog's super friendly, look at it smiling. And then that's what made it. Uh, I was gonna say a breedable dog, but that sounds wrong. <laughs> Gross. Yep. Phrasing. <laughs> Phrasing. Um a, uh, <clears throat> a, a desirable... Desirable trait, yep. Yeah, a desirable trait. That is a better way to say it. It's uh, it's the thing that made people go, hey, this dog was great. We should uh, we should get it a, a mate because I want more like it. More puppies. Yep. That is, that is something that I think people kind of... Well, though. Like, evolution versus... Um, like eugenics. dog breeding yeah dog breeding is, is yeah, effectively eugenics right like it just is um those are two very different things like they work on the same principles but like selecting for traits is very different than how evolution works yeah um, speciation i think speciation is the term yeah. you're looking for because yeah yeah evolution is essentially evolution is only uh the effectiveness for a creature to pass on its genes that's the only thing it's selecting for 100 yep. percent everything else is uh variable and, and kind of just throwing your hands in the air and say fuck it like that's this, which is why we have a lot of weird things yep most animals are a lot more biologically determined humans make tools rather than gain physical mutation and early stage change. yeah yeah so what you're talking about there is is uh evolutionary drift which is something that humans have been dealing with for a while like because we are very we are less we have less pressures on us to procreate um we have stopped we, we've lessened the evolutionary pressure on us um so we can get a lot more drift which is why like people can survive perfectly well with glasses right like um things that would have killed us a million years ago don't anymore like like lactose intolerance is the normal <laughs> just want to put that up that's the normal yep. and people drinking milk into their you know later years of life is an evolutionary trait because it was something that just it was drifting yeah. happened and then that became an advantageous uh trait to have so and yeah. not all people have that. it's still i think it's like i think it's like 20 percent. only 20 percent of the population 20 percent of the population in the world yeah yeah it's is not lactose intolerant really <laughs> yeah uh i mean for more than anything but isn't it even real really a force that's also consciousness uh I'm not sure that sentence made sense to me, Dragon Turtle. Most animals are a lot more biological instead of emotions and most animals. So, so uh, emotional intelligence is a thing that we're kind of looking at now, and that's like part of the reason that um, people have talked about like octopus and squid. Um, not squids, but like octopus and a few other things. They're like, oh, they're too smart. We shouldn't eat them. And it's like, eh, they don't have the same type of intelligence we do. Like, they just don't. Like, their brains do not function the same way, so we can't really compare them apples to apples. But they can do things that we think are um, similar, like uh, tool using or memorization or, like, forming bonds with people. Like, they'll know people yeah, and they'll yeah. come back to people. But whether or not they're doing that because they want to and enjoy it or because they know it's advantageous, like, hey, there's a person here and they might protect me or give me food. We don't know. We just don't know. Um, most evolution happens in small points of crisis where a species voice faces potential extinction outside that it's really slow and minor. yeah um yeah you're, you're talking about like explosive uh events which could be like meteors like hitting climate change uh drastic things and then and then you have drift but evolution is always going like that's the thing evolution is always going and it's less that evolution like spikes really hard when those happen and it's just that if niches drop off creatures that are highly specialized for them can't survive so you only see 
the remaining thing. Like, if it all yeah. of a sudden gets cold, there's not a huge influx of fuzzy creatures, right? It's just only the fuzzy ones survived. It's actually a mass die-off of the creatures that weren't fuzzy. Um, yeah, yeah. Which can then leave space for creatures to grow because, you know, there's less competition, which is great. But it yeah. really is it really is more of a die-off event than, like, evolution spiking in a certain yeah specific. so the so the era where we where we get like a whole bunch of like a boom of new <clears> species <throat> showing up like you see in um cambian expansion or whatever yeah the, the great cambian explosion um <laughs> like that that happens specifically because there's a die-off first and then everything that survives there's suddenly all of this extra room in all of these niches that need to be filled within yep. ecosystems extra uh, and so then yeah so then anything that finds a, a, a niche that needs to be filled uh, will fill it. Hmm. The Cambrian was because of trees, right? I think, I if I remember right, so. essentially what happened is there was an event that happened leading trees that were uh, like bark. Bark happened, right? Yeah. Cambrian happened. Bark happened. And then all of a sudden, bugs couldn't eat these plants, and so the plants, i.e. trees, just exploded. Like, there's just took over most of the landmass and all of yep. a sudden you have these this huge new ecosystem i mean this happened over millions of years but yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> but all of a sudden the ecosystem changed and so all of these creatures had to start adapting to it and so all of a sudden we went from having you know three or four really good systems of insect-like creatures eating these vines to all of a sudden thousands and thousands and millions of different types trying to fit in those niches and, and find things yeah, yeah explosion of terrestrial plant life yeah 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 it also it also helped that um, they um, uh, because there were so many trees because like because plants are are you know a, a foundational species mm -hmm. uh, there was also suddenly a massive surplus of oxygen. Yep, that was another thing which allowed creatures to get much bigger, which is kind of cool. Okay, this was supposed to be a bark monk bark robed monk so let's get a good body shape here let's see i want this hand oh i have the body face forward that's wrong that's wrong if we ever put this forward we want this arm here and then the elbow out like that so the shoulder will actually be way back here the front of the body will be this way we have a hip this is supposed to be a halfling so i'm gonna make them a little skinnier Was this, I can't remember, was it wind or lightning? I think it was a storm. I'm going to look. I'm going to look. No, I'm not sure. I have not learned attention. airbending. It's an airbender. Okay. Trees didn't evolve until like 100-ish million years after the Cambrian explosion. Oh, interesting. Cambrian explosion followed massive surpluses of oxygen. Didn't really know exactly what caused it. Best bet is the oceanic plankton, which makes the most oxygen for the day. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Thank you, Rinshar. Um, so it was it was the oxygen first, which caused plants, and then plants turned into trees. Is that that's the order of operations that we're looking at? I, I guess so. I'm not. I've never been a hundred percent sure on the timeline, honestly. I do know that there had to be all of the oxygen before they could have the uh, the uh, dragonfly the size of an eagle. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the tarantula that was as big as a dog. Take that, diffusion lungs. And that's why diffusion is stupid. <laughs> uh, it still works well for the giant bird-eating tarantula in the Amazon rainforest. Yeah, but how giant is giant? Uh, bigger than most people's hands. That's not that big. I think it's the largest tarantula species. Yeah, probably. 
I don't think it's, it was dog sized spiders. Millipedes, however, are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. I know Dragon Turtle. I'm I'm being a little bit facetious here. Like, if we're not talking she lob levels of spiders, I just don't care. Like, camel spiders, terrifying. Oceanic crabs, terrifying. Well, camel spiders aren't actually dangerous. No, they're just terrifying. I mean, they're just yeah. You find one of those in your boot, you don't... You don't like, oh, that's cute. You, you go, chop, bop, <laughs> throw your boot across. The most the... it can do to you, though, is give you the heebie-jeebies and pinch your finger a little bit. I, I think we're on the same page here. I'm like, <laughs> that That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't like it when creatures scare me. Yeah, but the worst they can do is scare you. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's the same thing. The same thing is happening. I guess the, the, the place I'm coming from is uh, thinking of camel spiders always reminds me of a... a specific type of viper that that also lives uh, in that area uh called the spider tail viper oh, it's and spider, yeah. um they're, yeah they're they're kind of like uh rattlesnakes in that they've got a, a gale build up structure on their tails but instead of rattling it looks like a camel spider <laughs> and they use it to attract birds so Weep, I'm, weep, I'm, weep, yeah, weep. I'm just saying I would rather find the camel spider in my boot than the uh, the spider-tailed viper. Hello. Locally, St. Patrick got rid of all the spi snake spiders? Sp snakes. There we go. Uh, snakes. Got rid of all the snakes. It said vipers and it threw me off. I don't know why. That was weird. I hope your stream goes well. Yeah, thanks, Green Liquid. Hook him in. And or goodbye, I'm not sure. <laughs> they have like a three foot wingspan. That's pretty big, yeah. Carboniferous era, which was like the direct fall of the getting trees. Okay, so I, I had the Cambrian in that one, and that one mixed up. I won't trust it until I'm sure it's not venomous. Even then, my mom boot infected from spider bite. Even then, my mom... I'm guessing got infected from a spider bite. Birds eating spiders are the biggest, and they're a little less than a foot in width, and their legs out, with their legs outstretched. Yeah, okay. Danger needles are cute. Taxonomically, tarantulas are slightly different than proper or like true spiders, right? Yeah. Jump Rope was having me watch something about that. Most spiders aren't true spiders. But in the grand scheme yeah. of things, it doesn't matter. So. Yeah. So I think the I think the Huntsman spider in Australia is the largest true spider, although I could be wrong on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe they do not have the diffusion book lungs. I think they have a, uh, a more, air quotes, proper lung setup which is part of the reason that lets them get as big as they do. Gotcha. Because I, I believe most proper spiders have a real hard time getting bigger than, like, I don't know, a, a silver dollar. Yeah. The spiders like crabs. There are a lot of different fake spiders. Oh, are spiders like crabs where there are a lot of different fake spiders? Yes. Like, they're they're all arthropods. Yeah, but then spiders are a very specific branch, and then there's a bunch of arthropods that are like don't fall into that branch. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So if like if we're gonna get into the specifics, um, spiders and tarantulas are both very closely related. Um, arachnids. Yeah, arachnids. Other things in the arachnid family are tarantulas and uh, vinegaroons, and. There's a couple. There's a couple more. Vinegaroons are, I think, also called whiptail scorpions. They're really weird. Uh, I think camel spiders are also in a slightly different branch. So, like it, it all breaks down as to like how we how we build the family tree. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff has changed really recently because it's been only like within the last ten years that genome sequencing has become fast and relatively cheap. So scientists can actually like look at the genetic material of things and figure out exactly what's related to what. Yeah. So, 
Anyway, all of it doesn't really matter. It's just, it, it really only matters if you're in a position where you need to be absolutely 100% clear on exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready to roll. What should I... Roll what me uh, d24 somehow. Okay. Rinshar, by the way, if you want to draw with us today, you're very welcome to. You don't have to do the uh, the uh, list like we normally do, but you're always welcome to to, uh, to join us if you like. If you'd like to throw out your commission link or something, you're welcome to as well. War Weavers, I think, are the biggest... Araniomorph. Araniomorph. Yeah, I don't. Know. Oh, that makes sense. Spider. Okay. Yep. I get it. Uh, <laughs> just what you're talking about <laughs> with the true spiders. Gotcha. I rolled an eight. An eight. Okay. Let me look at this. Bugbear swarm keeper with a favorite enemy of ferrets. <laughs> I know. Bear swarm keeper who's afraid of cat snakes. Okay. Yeah. I, I was asking the person about this because I'm like, did they want? Is there swarm ferrets or is their favorite enemy ferrets? And they said yes. So do that with what you will. Swarm keeper ranger, bug bear. There were two rabbits on my lawn last night. Um, and I went out to get the mail, and they both just stood there and stared at me. I'm like, you sons of bitches. Like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and they let me, like, I could have kicked them. I could have kicked them, and they were just like, nope, this is my yard. And I'm like, this is not your yard. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I say I could have kicked them. I almost tripped over one of them because I didn't see it. And then I did <laughs> see it, and I was like, ah, rabbit. And then I went in the house, and I came out, and there were two of them all of a sudden. And I was just like, oh, Oh, not happy. You, you should have just sicked Pixel on him. <laughs> he tried. He ran to the huh. door, and I was like, no, 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 no. You don't need to get kicked kicked by a rabbit right now. I'm not taking you to the hospital. Uh, <laughs> taxonomy is kind of a fuzzy science at best at times, so I'd say the answer is if you want, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. Does it mean that if there are no true spiders, crabs, fallacy? Uh, it's it's the whole fish thing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. When, when you're classifying things... It only matters um, to the people who care about it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So the the you should really think at the about the carcinization thing. Everything becomes crab. That's that's just a meme, right? There are two crabs. It's, it, like, okay, okay. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the there are true crabs, but like the the idea of carcinization really is just that. A lot of arthropods become very crab-like because yeah. it is a very efficient design. Yeah, what uh, you're, you're very... saying is things don't actually yeah. turn into crabs. Yes, yeah. I was going to make the argument that the the crab body plan has evolved several times over different species because it's efficient, yes. and that's what people mean when they say everything becomes crabs. Everything starts to look like a crab eventually um, because yeah. it yeah. fulfills like a, there's a huge niche for it, um, and it just kind of it works out. So. Uh, but like yeah but that's kind of where the um i suppose i suppose it's not fair for me to say it is it's all just a meme um i think that um the uh, that's kind of where the confusion starts to come in where you where you say that like a coconut crab isn't actually a crab well it sure does it sure doesn't look like a crab yeah. right yeah. <laughs> it, it acts like a crab if it if looks like a crab acts like a crab walks like a crab crawls like a crab is is it not a crab so this is this is where the taxonomy comes in. We like we call it a coconut crab, and for most of us, that's all we need, yep. right? Um, and then if we're gonna, uh, it only becomes uh, problematic calling it a crab when uh, when you're a, a biologist, yeah, uh, trying to trying to figure out exactly what it is and and how it do what it do. Um, spiders are. Kind of, arachnids are kind of the same way, right? So yeah. we, we, we just divide them into different families, and, and a lot of stuff that looks the same, we can we can let it be. Right. We can let it have the colloquial name. We don't need to. All... A, a good example of like functionality for that is in the classica classification of species, right? Because if you're looking yeah. at something and you're like, oh look, we have koalas and pandas. They look close enough. They're probably related, and it's like. 
this line go jumping to these two just because they look the same could be completely far off and screw up the system of like seeing how things actually came about so at one point it doesn't really matter if you call a panda a bear like a panda bear and a red panda like a panda right it's like okay they look similar so they're named the same but like how related are they matters um and so the naming conventions are there to help people understand those relationships um and that's why we have scientific names versus just colloquial names so the scientific names are more important and that's when people are like oh it's not actually a spider like because it's it doesn't fit into the uh, scientific naming conventions because of its or it shouldn't it shouldn't that's the thing i'm looking at it so we yeah we get the we get the same problem we're taught when we talk about uh, a tomato is a fruit not a vegetable yeah exactly it's like it's that's fine like that's perfect for someone trying to understand and grow different types of fruit because maybe different things mean different things but yep. uh, you probably shouldn't put it in a fruit salad <laughs> yep right unless the fruit salad you're making a salsa yep correct which yep technically a fruit salsa. Uh, this pug bear is looking a little bit more bear than, than I was going to say, it looks a little rugby-ish. Well, I, I do pull a lot from rugby. I love the rugby nose. Can blame Jonas for that one, I guess. Oh, she's an airbender. Does she need the little, like, wing cape? Maybe I'll do that. I have one of those weird, weird brains that will like ask a question and then have to find the answer for it. <laughs> so I, <laughs> yep. I did a deep dive on brass knuckles uh, like a month or two ago, <laughs> and like uh, I watched a whole demonstration on like the proper way that they're supposed to be used, and I've been drawing them wrong for years. <laughs> Apparently, they are supposed to actually they are supposed to actually go on your like middle knuckles, not your. So it's where I would normally draw them like this. They're actually supposed to be on your fist, uh, like this. Not protecting these knuckles, but protecting these knuckles. Oh, seriously? Yeah. See, I, I always put them here. Yeah, because apparently if you punch them with here, it'll break your thumb. So it's supposed to, it's supposed to like, when you close your hand, it's supposed to go across those tops so it's completely lined up with your, uh, with your arm. So I guess if we do it this way. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, this, this, when you punch somebody, go down and back. So you want it, you want it out here so that you're, eh, eh. Sorry, that's the way a hand should look. You want it to line up together. I do that really badly. I do that really badly. Either way, you don't punch the same way with brass knuckles as you do normally. You, like, you, you, you Dick Tracy punch him. I don't know if that just got me demonetized or not, but super weird. Super weird. Didn't know that. Um, vegetable is a colloquialism thing, too. It's just cooking a thing. Something can both be a fruit and a vegetable, like corn. That's, yeah, that's fair. Uh, I technically, that corn's a grain. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's a lot of wrong things in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, because corn is also a fruit and a vegetable. And a grain. <laughs> and a grain, yes. All these terms are, are made up and applied arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of the point. The, that's the point that I was trying to make. We don't need to worry about it that much. There's no point. Yeah, there's no point. Um, actualing each other into uh, 
in, into oblivion. That's why no one's allowed to talk in my chat, because that way I'm yeah. always right. <laughs> well, you let me talk, and uh, I do um actually quite a lot, so I realize this is very uh, uh, hypocritical of me to say, but I'm trying to be better. I'm acknowledging my faults and trying to be better. Yeah, brass knuckles are supposed to basically be really close, if not over the top of your uh, your middle knuckle, like your finger knuckles, not your the the actual knuckles, not the the bones of your fingers. Correct. Yeah. Cover the joint, not the uh, or at least like bone. at least the the joint side of the the finger, like not right in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to accidentally dislocate your thumb. Or break your fingers, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I like You have faults. It... I am a flawed, a horribly flawed man. Uh, I just Everybody is. It... Anybody yeah. who claims otherwise is, is Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in, Brian. <laughs> Sorry, that was... that was meant to be a joke. I do not want to go politics. I'm just going to leave it right there. I saw I saw a thing last night of uh, an interview that Stephen Colbert did in like 2012 when he uh -huh. was running for president. I don't know if people remember that. I don't. <laughs> he did a he basically he did like a super conservative uh, I'm gonna run for president campaign as his you know daily yeah, show as, Stephen as, Colbert. As his, yeah, yeah. That's his as his persona so it wasn't and, uh, a, a real bid it was yeah it was 100 percent just a bit but like because john stewart was his uh his uh, campaign campaign uh manager manager or... yeah and the whole the whole bit that was the interview was they were like how could you have him be your manager he's very liberal and cobert is just like like oh no no really i'm gonna get rid of him i'm gonna fire <laughs> and but it was like the, the person watching the video was either A, trolling really hard, or B, being like, look at the hypocrite. Like, this guy is total bullshit. It's like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I thought it was funny. I'm practically perfect in every way. Well, look, I, I know more than one extremely conservative person who who took that that persona, mm -hmm. making fun of conservatives that took Colbert it for serious. had, and took it, yeah, 100% for serious. Jonas, welcome in. Hey, bud. Good to see you. We're talking about plants and stuff today. And knuckle dusters. I think that's probably how I summoned Jonas on accident. Talking about the knuckle dusters. That would make sense. This person might be a little too tall for a halfling. Let's, let's squat him up a little bit. There we go. I made it to bugbear. All bugbears should have nasty cowlicks, right? I guess. <laughs> you went to politics on us. Being my 50-page manifesto against everything I stand for. Throw it the window. <sighs> we got to start a religion one of these days. <clears throat> Apparently it's quite lucrative. Yeah. Yeah, right? The Great Lord Zambezi... I don't, I'm trying to think of a funny name. I was going to say... Is, what's the what's the thing that goes on? Zamboni? I was going to say the Great Lord Zamboni. Demands that I have a... Uh, demands that I have a jet. Bri, thank you for the membership. Would you like a, a small goblin drawn? I've seen many people like that. <clears throat> I call them living straw men because they embody people's straw men in group position. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad name. I'm <clears> fortunate <throat> in that. I know very few people like that. I hate it when I watch a clip of someone that I normally, like, kind of disagree with, like Joe Rogan or something. Uh huh. And they'll say something that's, like, very poignant. <laughs> it's just like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're not wrong. Shit. Why do you yeah. have to make a good point? <laughs> you're not wrong. You're just an asshole. Yep. I feel that. Yeah, what the hell would bark bark look like as clothes? Like, is it fabric at all? Or is it just like plate mail? <laughs> Whoa. In Jonas's honor, can I have a thick thighed goblin? I, mean, I guess so. I suppose so. It's not normally how things go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not commenting too much at all. I mean, I can tone it down for you. No, Dragon Turtle, and essentially, like, as long as you're staying on topic, I'm fine with you guys talking as much as you want. So, it's all good. Oh, my goodness. I just want to move away from political stuff, but that's personal reasons. And, and I'm mean, the one who brought it up, so uh, once again, hypocritical of me. It's Friday. We can be as spicy as we want. Yeah, but I'm... I'm not in the mood to be spicy. I want it to would be, be chill. It would be really I, funny if we like had a really, really, like heavily political uh, stream, and then I disappeared for two weeks. <laughs> 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 that would be pretty great. That would be pretty funny. We are in yeah planning mode. Here we go. I was jump rope feeling. You'd have to ask her. Just because it's not my, my way to, place to say anything. Fair. <clears throat> I got a dresser for the kids' room. And I have to put that together this weekend. And I was like, would it be funny for me to have a stream where I put together IKEA furniture? Because I have never had problem putting together IKEA furniture. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Like, I don't know why people get so uh, dramatic about it. A lot of people have have difficulty following instructions. Like, I like, I, I thought about that for a really long time, but like, I now know several people in my extended family who don't know how to play with Legos. Okay, that's fair. That that is something I might not think. Like, I. I do have a, I do don't have. I was gonna say, I, I started going for like an engineering degree, and I took a whole bunch of like, processes classes, and like for a while, part of my thing was instructional design. Like I took a bunch of classes in instructional yeah, design because yeah. like how can I do art and engineering? And then it was like I hate engineering, let's just do art. <laughs> but uh, which is then art. That's what architecture is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, but Pretty no, much. a big part of that was um. Yeah, like I like I like having Lego diagrams, right? Like yeah, diagrams yeah. are great. I love them. I mean, in in terms of designs or a lot like uh, in, in terms of examples for really good uh, visual instructions for how to build something, Lego is peak. Mm -hmm. And it's, IKEA is pretty great too. Like yeah, I know IKEA is I, IKEA is fantastic. Lego is probably the best in the industry. I would say so, because. Like, Ikea did a, a really smart thing with... They basically only use numbers because yeah. they have international, right? Like, so you can't just write words. They, like, we have to be able to put this together without that. And Lego goes a step further because the people that are touching these Legos probably can't read. So it's, yeah. like, <laughs> so it's, even, it's even more demanded that it's pictures and not, um, not language. Um, I found the Coke words can't follow flowcharts. Head slap. That's, that's rough. That is rough. Sorry for your your uh, your pain. Yeah, we're getting close. We're getting close, and I'm excited. Kind of just want wanted to hurry up and be done. Yep.
Bark I, I get that, but the the first couple weeks after after baby is uh, arrived, uh, it's probably going to be pretty rough sleep wise. That's fair. <laughs> I started reading that, Brian, and then you deleted it, so I don't know what you were saying. <laughs> D and D games are dying. I, I think a bunch of people might start wanting to play uh, Daggerheart, so it might be worth grabbing the the playlist, playlist, the uh, play test. Maybe looking into that, doing a game or two. There is. Um, I was telling Corvus this the other day, but there is there is some decisions about rules and game design that. Um, that they made that uh, are hundred percent things that I thought about uh, when writing the TTRPG that I've been making for fun, mm -hmm. um, and like I discarded those ideas not because they I didn't think they would work, but because they weren't what I was going for. Um, so it's it's one it's really gratifying to to be like, hey, Matt Mercer had the same idea as me. Yeah, That's uh, nice. and. Yeah, and two, it's also really, really cool to see, um, to see, like, non-proprietary ideas get, get, like, used and recycled and, um, put in areas where they can be applied well. There's something that kind I... Of I fun. Yeah. Because that noise. No, I, I think what you're talking about is, is, is very valid, like... It's one thing that I think I keep telling people like, hey, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, because like, I don't want to say there's only so many good ideas, but like a lot of things that make that like are, make common sense. Like the, there's a lot of homebrew out there that people homebrew a certain way independently yep. from each other because it just makes sense. And so that kind of stuff is the stuff that should go into your game, especially if you're making like a second version of a game. Um, yeah. And that's one thing I love looking at, which is why... We talked about Lethal Company. Well, not Lethal Company. Danger Company? Is it Lethal Company? It is Lethal Company. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's Lethal Company. I think one of the smartest things they did was let people mod it. And yeah, a lot of the yeah. mods that were put into the game were things that should have been in Phasmophobia. <laughs> because uh, people played yeah, Phasmophobia 100%. and, like, modded that. And then when Lethal Company came out, they just they automatically did some things that were already there there and then the people were like yeah these mods that exist here we want them over here too it's like why wasn't that just put in the game if they had looked at their if they had looked at the things that people were already homebrewing for older systems and put it in the new systems like that's that's the smart way to do game development um, yeah agreed i've been into I, um, I feel nice. the exact same way about minecraft actually i think yeah. if minecraft had not been open for for modding it would not it would never have survived I don't think so. Yeah, uh, and and uh, a good example of this is uh, a lot of old, a lot of old game companies would go out and look for modders to hire, like because that's yeah great. Same thing for World of Warcraft. Like a lot of what is in the basic World of Warcraft now were mods, were mods yep. that people did in vanilla. Um, like quest tracking and like <laughs> I remember skipping quests at one point in time was like a thing you had to get a mod for. Like, I don't want to talk. I just want to go. So uh, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Hello, hello. Gamma, welcome in. It's been a while since I caught a stream. Hope things are going well. And also congratulations on the spawn link. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're very excited about it. And yeah, welcome in. It's been a while. Anyways, I'm out. Have a good one. No problem, Rin. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, modding seems like it should be a no-brainer. If you can help facilitate it without being a pain or breaking anything, why shouldn't you? Yeah, and that's that's why a lot of games that don't allow modding, I'm very frustrated with. Um, because Thanks. they're kind of saying, no, we don't want you to touch our stuff. And it's just like, like get out of here. <laughs> no, our so. game is perfect and you can't play with it. That being said, there there is a, a limitation for like, with World of Warcraft, like, um, because it's a multiplayer kind of like competitive game where it used to be mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff makes sense like you shouldn't be able to mod league of legends so that you always hit all the time right like that kind of stuff doesn't yeah, yeah. need to be parsed out but in like single player games yeah definitely and in multiplayer non-competitive games definitely like mods are are the way to go i didn't go super yeah. thick but i went thick a little thick so Bugbear's a goblin. I suppose I could give him super, super beef thighs. 
I wanted to do a sun hat. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do a sun hat, but I did. I've been trying to think about the ferrets. Do I just give this guy a fucking spear and have three ferrets keyword on the end? Is that too gruesome, chat? <laughs> People might be mad. People might be mad at you. Uh, the only thing I don't like is when game devs not just implicit, implement a mod, but then they go out of their way to make modding a completely ridiculous trial, and then they implement it with no nod to the original creator. Yeah, that's 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 partially sad. Like, that's partially sad. Yeah. Um, there, there are different aspects of it. Like... Um, Like I said, with, with Warcraft, I know a couple of modders that, like, got hired on to Blizzard, but I also know a couple mods that were just, like, very basic things that should have been in the game anyways that Blizzard just implemented themselves, right? Like, that, that being an idea, it's also something that, like, the community is just asking for. You don't necessarily have to hire a person that did it before you did unless you're, like, using their source code. So there's yeah. there's two sides of that, but I agree with I agree with it mostly of what you're saying. So, yeah. Uh, hang tight, everybody. I'll be right back. Give me one minute. Be right back, and then we'll we'll get back to it. Do we need? Are we done with this one? Hmm. I think we're done with this. One. I don't know what else to do. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna I'm gonna start a new one. Beep. Hang tight. Hmm. Hey, Jonas. Hi. How are it's been you? A while. It's been a very long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing good. Right. Yeah. Oh, the delay is not helping. Holy shit. No, it's not. Sorry. No, it's my bad. My internet's probably pretty bad right now. We'll we'll find the rhythm and it'll get better. I'll just uh, take like bullet five second pause. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, are you gonna draw or do you just wanna hang out? I'm probably gonna hang out right now. Okay. Cool. It's been a while since I just chatted with you guys. Yeah. I oh, um. Yeah. Um, so I was, I've been meaning to invite you back to the, uh, the Pathfinder game to play more Toji, but we, um, we had a kind of a, a longer, like, you had a side quest in hell, I believe, or something. Yeah. And it went longer than I expected and you weren't there. For yeah. I, I saw that. I was so. like, yeah, I probably very hard to include me. So I wasn't going to pester yeah. you about it. Yeah. There Which were a couple, fair. yeah, there were a couple of places where I probably could have, but, uh, I was never sure on when we were going to get to what. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so, um, I will almost definitely send you uh, a reminder for the next the next little thing that we do. That's uh, nice. I do check in on what people what people are talking about. I think I have unmuted it now. <laughs> <laughs> So I just That's sometimes cool. look at what you guys have been talking about. I'm like, hmm, I feel like yeah. a stalker. <laughs> well, you are a little bit, and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah. I was, if we were going to play tomorrow, I was for sure going to invite you. Uh, but I feel like shit this week, so I'm not, I'm not running anything. That's completely fair. Yeah, I've had a lot more time to pop into the streams because all of my D, &D games are just dying oh that's sad yeah i haven't had like proper D, &D in two weeks essentially oh but yeah i used to have a lot of games but now it's barely one or two a week so <laughs> well there's like one every two weeks maybe yeah usually yeah. when you guys uh, our own stream. I have a game going on, so oh, no, I gosh. don't. So maybe I'll just waste my time and come here instead. Cool. Hey, <laughs> I'd love to hang out with you. I'd love to see your uh, your drawing as well. I don't know if I've improved at all. I've been like second guessing myself really hard recently. Oh, <laughs> because I'm like, has anything changed? And I look at something old, I'm like, yeah, there's like been like a millimeter of like improvement. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I feel Essential. like I've improved quite a lot since the last time we drew together. You certainly uh, have. I'm. I'm looking at the stuff. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Thank you. 
I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I have, I also take more time and like break my own brain every time oh. I sit down to draw something. So yeah, chat can probably tell you. Uh, uh, Wednesday when I was I was uh drawing a uh, a lizard folk character that was, you can uh, I'm sure you can see it in the Discord and draw uh, the scroll up. underwater. It's the yeah, it's the it's the lizard underwater. I was fucking dumb enough to do a, a whole damn scene and uh <laughs> basically broke my brain and i had to sign off immediately after because i hadn't realized that i hadn't moved in three hours well, like an hour and a half and then i was like in crazy amounts of pain after that and dalcor was drawing with us and like i my brain also wasn't working so i like I made a couple of comments that okay, kind of sounded like I thought that I was just the best person drawing in the stream at the time, which was super cringy. It was uh, You're probably overthinking it. Wait, what? Probably. Well, what? maybe. What are we talking about? I don't know. I did, I did listen in the stream. I don't remember that, but... Rick, Rick did call me out on, on it, on, on so telling it? Dalcor that how good I was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was all... I thought it was all in jest, but that's why I gave you shit uh, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it, it super was, yeah. and my brain knows that it was, like, that you were just teasing me, but also, the, you know, there's that, that artist anxiety underneath that goes, oh, no, I'm being censored. He's 100% right. I'm such an asshole. <laughs> Hello, Rook. Howdy, howdy. Did you want to draw with us today, Jonas? Uh, I'm not going to do right now. That's fine. I mostly came to chill. Let me know if you want to join us. Um, okay. YouTube is up on my end, Moniker, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Is anyone else having issues with the YouTube? Uh, no. Seems fine to me. It's my side. Okay, gotcha. A wild Jonas appears. It's super effective. Oh, yeah, I need a roll. I was like, what am I drawing right now? Uh, 17. Teenage half orc ranger, hunter. Boy who is a monster chef's apprentice. Wacky. I, I never did get confirmation from chat. Is it okay if I if oh. I this if I show the uh, the ferret skewer? I think consensual stalking is just dating, Gamma. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Considering the conversation we had about it, it's kind of wacky to think. Of. Yeah, I missed it. Yeah. I missed. I missed the conversation. No, I just came we back were... to consensual stalking question mark, and it's like, yeah, that's yeah. just that's just following people around. Like, no, uh, we were we were talking a little bit about uh, about Jonas, um, kind of following along in the chat, but not really interacting for gotcha. our Pathfinder Two game when uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, during the little help lanes excursion. Uh, Bry says, absolutely. So, if Bry's willing to sponsor the rest of this episode, <laughs> we can have a skewered ferret. We can have a ferret come <laughs> on. Okay. Thank you for the membership, Bry. I do appreciate that. Do you want another goblin? 46 months? Bry's been here from the beginning. Yeah. And has yeah. never, never failed to continue to subscribe. I need to, uh, I need to make more thumbnails. Uh, like icons. I think I'm gonna put all the little bird, the bird yelling and stuff. It's little emotes. Oh, yeah, I've been wondering for a while, Rook. When did the bird character become a thing? Uh, when YouTube Shorts became a thing. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you did use a different thing in the beginning, but mm -hmm. I, I printed out because like a big thing was like my icon has always been my my face in a mask, right? And yeah. like the more it's I talk to people the about it. Mask. Yeah, it's a Nathus Max, which nobody knows what that means. And uh, I started realizing that, like, if I'm going to have an avatar, I should make something that is just wholly my own and maybe not just a dude. <laughs> so so I, I went with the, the bird. I think I turned myself into a bird for one of the videos. And I thought it was really funny, so I just kept it. Interesting. Yeah. And I've been wondering it for a while when I watch your thoughts. So I'm like, hmm. It makes a better puppet. It's just more emotive than a... A dude with a mask. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only thing you could do with the mask is go to Deadpool. Yeah, route. just like eyebrows. That's it. Yeah, it's just gonna go super hard. Yeah, 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 Gamma, welcome to the goblins. Uh, 
Gamma, uh, since you got that on the YouTube, let me know if you would like Discord uh, goblin privileges. Those are linked, so you just have to message me on Discord. Uh, is there a thing? If his thing is ferrets, is he scared of them? It sounds like he just wants to keep them with arm's reach whenever possible, like throwing them at people or having them fall at a distance. Well, the, the, the only tidbit we actually got was that ferrets are his favorite enemy. Yeah. A belt of just ferrets. A course. belt of ferrets. I hate them. I hate them, but I can control them. These little fuckers. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, ferret bolas, you know. <laughs> I and I've like I've been racking my brain trying to figure out um what a uh what animal a ferret hunter would keep as a swarm to help them hunt ferrets, but like mm. there's not a lot that eat that like specifically hunts f anything in the weasel family. Cobras. <laughs> No, most most mustelids uh, goes the other way around. <laughs> they eat the snakes. The snake more often than the snakes eat them. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, coyotes. Coyotes could work. They hunt weasels. Yeah. But I think coyote is too big to have a swarm of them. <laughs> Very coyotes. Uh, I have no idea how that would work. Yeah, me neither. Boxes could work. What was I doing? Shoot. In Florida, oh. alligators, but no Bryce again. The mustelids, especially the river otters, they're as likely to eat the alligators as, it, as for it to go the other way around. Especially if you've got a whole family. How does that work if two apex predators eat each other? Are they both apex predators? Or are they not yeah. apex predators because things eat them? Um, I believe they're still apex predators. Okay. Mutual apexing? That sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Predatory birds would eat ferrets fairly well. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Badgers. Yeah, nothing messes with a badger. Just throw badger grenades in the fray. Badger grenades. Thank you for, for giving me a, a new item I'm going to homebrew. <laughs> it's just a pocket dimension full of badgers. Badgers all the way down. <laughs> Bag of badgers sounds like an item that needs to exist. I, uh, my brother built a, uh, uh, it was a modified trash bag of holding for my goblin character. Trash bag. Uh, <laughs> and occasionally raccoons came out of that because I was a trash panda and so I was their That's kid. <laughs> but the, the, the badger dimension does sound terrifying. I only ever got, I think, one person to go into my uh, realm of Goose. That was really funny. Realm of Goose? Yeah. Made a Goose dimension. Was that in the, um, uh, was that Tower? where you went when you, when you went through the, the hole that produced ducks and yeah. or, um, what was it, uh, Abyssal Chickens yep. in the Tower of Ashfont? Well, the Abyssal Chickens just came from hell, but like the other one, yeah, since you do a, since you do a, a goose dimension that was protected by a giant goose. <laughs> I wanted a, to make a real that. one this time? Oh yeah, no, it was a real one. It was just like, it was a horse-sized goose. And awesome. nobody, nobody ever decided to fight it. Horse-sized goose. Ugh. <laughs> uh. See, Rook, if nobody ended up fighting it, you're playing your goose wrong, because it doesn't matter if they decided to fight it or not, the goose is going to fight you. Man, goose are assholes. Geese are assholes. 
All goose are asshole. Yes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, monstrous. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. But it's funny. And also, I would hate to play in the same party as you, as that character. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have. <laughs> riddle me this. Riddle me piss, Batman. <laughs> uh. And why do I always choose these horrible angles for wrists and hands? Yeah, that those are some horrible angles sometimes. When in doubt, fake it. Yeah, I got decent at hands, and then now I feel like I'm like I can't draw hands anymore again. I know that because like a month or two where I just drew hands, I was like, hell yeah, I can do this now. I stopped drawing for like a month. Come back, mm. and I can't draw it's anymore. Hell, yes. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> I resemble that. Yeah, because this last week I've been drawing more than I have in the past two months. So. That's cool. Yeah. Which well, is as long as you're enjoying cool. it. Yeah, I am. Good. I certainly hope so. At least I'm spending a lot of time on it. How did your uh, How did your diving go? Uh hell diving. Yeah. Uh, from the last time. Yeah. Um, we're playing difficulty seven, and we're doing the nice. tower thing. So I, it was pretty hell because I think we killed like twenty battle titans in total. <laughs> I did. We were fighting the robots on seven the other day, and uh, I took out five uh, drop ships like back to back. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> I just felt so badass, and then I missed the last shot, and uh, and it bummed me out. And then so I like grabbed a spare rocket, I shot one more, and the ship vanished. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then it reappeared directly behind me and just crushed me into the ground. And I was like, what the oh, hell no. was that? <laughs> <laughs> the game's just cheating now. And then I was, I was, I was bummed because I thought I was on the When a dungeon master wants you dead. Yeah. <laughs> it was just total glitchiness after like a very epic moment. I was just like, dang it. Hmm. Yeah, played some Hell Divers before this as well. Fought more bugs. Bugs are fun. What's your weapon of choice? Um. Oh god, what's its name? I already forgot. It's a shotgun. The slug? Uh, slug or the, like the defend the auto shotgun or the regular shotgun? The regular. I, I like the regular too. Like. Um, I just don't remember their names. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I know what you're talking about. That's the armor pen one with the blue. Yeah, shells. that's the one with the slugs. Yeah. Yeah, I use both. Slugger. Them, uh, depending. That one's really good. Also, Hell Divers is really enjoyable. The auto cannon. The auto cannon's fun. The auto cannon is ridiculous. If you have somebody uh, auto loading it for you, you can basically dump the entire backpack in like 20 seconds. Um, yeah, it's. Pretty useful against robots because I think you can destroy a tank with three shots to the wake. Oh, really? Yeah. The tanks you can are destroy it. rough. Yeah, you just need someone help else like distracting it so you can do it. Yeah, so you can shoot it in the back. Yeah. Uh, you can also take out the cannon turrets mm -hmm. uh, with three shots to the wake. Point. I've done At that. least I did. You can do that with the slugger shotgun too. <laughs> it takes a while, but you can do it. I haven't, I haven't tried. Yeah. Just need that armor penetration. Uh, I love it. My buddy likes playing support, so he carries the support pack. Yeah. Yeah, Your epicness broke it. reality. <laughs> yeah, the hell type <laughs> story. What kind of armor do you run? Um, I usually either go for the um, I like the orange pyro, not, not the one that gives you grenades, extra grenades or extra med packs. I usually switch between mm. those two. Um, 
every now and again I'll do like the I'll do the ballistic shield backpack and then take the one that gives you like more limb durability <laughs> so you don't, your arms don't get broken oh that's fun <laughs> that one's fun I like doing that hmm. I've rocked the orange line one for the super superstore at the moment yeah that one's good they all look really good all right should he be carrying a uh, like a, a big old haunch or should we uh, should we give him like a cake Interesting question. I can either put something on a plate, or I can just put like a big old, big old chunk of meat on it. I might just do the meat. Meat might be more on point. Yep. Yeah, personally, I like the scout armor more. I have some friends that like the scout armor too. The stealth in that game is is fun, but like, I have uh, I have way more friends that just like to shoot stuff off in the distance and like, well, all right, repercussions. Here we go. Yeah, I mainly have it because uh, usually we try to like you know split up with my friends that everyone equally goes this direction. But oh. for some reason, I'm always left alone, so I just go on a solo mission destroying like factories and stuff. Funny. Uh, but because of the armor, I can avoid like yeah patrols pretty easily. We do. I do have a friend that does that. Like he's basically our our point man. Like he'll just run off in. He's got like the jet pack and the the scout oh, armor. I also like the jet pack. And he'll just he'll take off and like start picking things off. And then when he runs into trouble, we just storm in. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah, I enjoy the mobility more than the armor. I feel like. It became a lot more squishier when they fixed the armor. <laughs> well, so what had happened was, from my understanding, is that all armor was medium armor. Period. Like, the mm -hmm. armor values weren't actually applying. So the heavy armor got way tougher. Like, I can take missile, like, rockets from the, uh, the robots if I have the shield now, which I couldn't before. Mm. Um... But if you have the scout armor, like, yeah, you just, you die. <laughs> you die real fast. <laughs> so. Avoid everything. Unless you mean just get headshot by a random rocket. Yep. It's medium armor is better. Hmm. I guess so. Personally, like, light armor is more. Which is good, because I'm usually... The guy who rocks the heaviest stuff in most games. Yeah, same. I don't think I've ever gone heavy armor in a game, but I think you guys play a lot more combat games than I do. I am a, uh, I'm what you call a hipster. When it comes to games, <laughs> so I like, I very regularly just hate the meta. Um, not like intentionally, I just, I just do. I just generally don't like the things. So, uh, yeah, I liked the flamethrower before it got buffed, and now I don't like it as much. <laughs> and mm. stuff like that. Like it's just so I, I like the heavy armor even when it sucked. But like it's not working right. I'm like I don't care. It looks cool. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> To the chagrin of my team, I'm bad. sure. All right, there we go. Salt Bay half work. <laughs> Quite an insult. I have a better idea. Wouldn't the shooter help with stealth by being distractions? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really nice to have a like a scout or an Overwatch person. Depending on the game, I either handle range support or I take point in heavy armor and other stack on me. Held hours, I find myself doing the first more. Yeah, I'm generally I'm generally a support character, but I'm usually a frontline support character. So like I'll be, um, I've been trying to run with smoke grenades. But you can't close the bug holes with smoke grenades, so I, uh, I've been running with, like, flame grenades. 
Um, and then I just, like, I drop shields and I protect people that way. It's really fun. You could take the grenade launcher. Does that make your life easier? Do they have a smoke grenade launcher? No, but you can destroy uh, bug holes. With those. Gotcha. Yeah, no, no. I usually have, uh, I usually have like, the, the rockets or something on me. Or, oh, like, I'll take a javelin just in case. And then I'll I'll run... Um, I'll do the javelin in the support pack, so I just have one rocket with me <laughs> and I run around with it. Or drop rockets, because I can drop them every, like, 40 seconds or something. I'm getting those hand cards, damn it. I also tend to play combat engineer, setting up choke points. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Gamma, I'm not sure if you and Monica are the same person or not. So, if <laughs> I'm not sure if that was the, the message earlier. But, uh, if it is, let me know and I'll add that, the, the goblin thing in Discord. Uh, I was going to say something, but I forgot. Okay, oh, you yeah. are. Uh, I generally like playing, like, loser characters in most games. Did you say loser yeah. characters? Bruiser. Bruiser, sorry. okay. Yeah, bruiser is... I used to get made fun of a lot for playing trolls in World of Warcraft. Because <laughs> they were the... Right. They were the worst for a while. Really? Mm -hmm. Trolls? Yeah, they were the least played the least played faction for quite a while. And then they got their oh. own expansion and well, people realized how cool Vul'jin was. <laughs> people came around. What? Oh, this... Uh, was this a Burning Legion? Yeah. Hmm. Next level six, then. Everyone was playing elves, so they yeah, were comparing to that. Yeah, and they dumb. were just overpowered. Stupid elves, <laughs> ruining right. everything. Okay, let me give you the, let me give you the goblin. Here, buddy. <sighs> there you go. Enjoy those sweet uh, Patreon stuffs. But, uh, Jonas, I still have a box. <laughs> I never, I never sorry. opened it up. It's just sitting here next to my door. Like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's not your. It's not. It's not either of our faults. It's, it's but, freaking. But blame the. Yeah, blame, blame your government. postmaster general for being a dick. Sorry. <laughs> well, the thing is, the post here it keeps going on strike for some fucking mm -hmm. reason. Uh, I'm Commenting. honestly surprised that doesn't happen here more. Oh man, the people are going on strike so often here. The boss traps and everything. They just want more like you know humane hours, <laughs> as they say. Uh... But yeah, because of D and D, I've actually enjoyed playing mages more in like video games. Interesting. I finally yeah, got to play, play a bard. The... That was really fun. <laughs> I also played a bard recently. I died. Oh no. I got, I didn't deal any damage in the combat encounter, but I was really annoying with my debuff spells, so I got focused down and killed. No one else took any damage. Fan mail streams, let's go. I have a, I have a PO box. I've had a PO box for a long time. Uh, I think I've only got like two things ever. So, yeah. I'm just gonna send yeah. a picture of myself too. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome too. <laughs> Jonas, did you ever get like the when I mailed the letters? Did you you got the stickers, right? Yes, I still have them. Okay, okay. so maybe I will just maybe I'll just mail you some stickers. That's fine. Um, I somehow snuck that through the post office just by putting two stamps on the letter. Like, even though I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it because it's international, but like, I don't know either. Uh, if it got there, it got there. You know, worst case scenario, they sent it back to me. Yep. How have I not known this? I don't know. You, I think you asked a while ago, and I, I, I told people. Um, I think where it's is also because you don't really advertise it too much. So. Yeah, I'm trying to think about where it actually is. You could do the old days YouTube thing where you're just opening my PO, PO box stuff and seeing what the fans send to me. You could do that. And Except well, there's only like there's just... only like ten people in the chat right now, so I wouldn't be a yeah. big fan. Probably I've got some cool stuff just, though. Like it was a draw in trolls. So. Um, Inferno made me some uh, 3D printed uh, rugby cookie cutters. 
So I made those for Christmas. I made I made rugby cookies. Cool. Did they actually turn out rugby shaped in the end? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he sent me in front of sent me like eight different types, and most of uh, them didn't work because of the way the plastic was and the cookie process. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what I discovered was there's one that that uh, it's like an inverted one, so it's 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 the rugby shape. Um with like holes for eyes so like this is the actual thing and so i just used that as a stamp so i made sugar cookies and i stamped rugby into it and it was great <laughs> so that's my favorite one i just have to make i can only make a rugby shape or rugby rugby stamped cookies not shaped cookies but it worked what it is really a well. rugby shape yeah. <laughs> good old rugby I got the rugby coins printed, by the way. Oh yeah, I don't remember rugby coins. When did that happen? Let me. I'd like to see those. Did I make those? Maybe I did make those. I remember making coins. I mentioned a while back. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, please send some pictures. Uh, tiefling who has been discriminated against and has their horn have, bleh, and has had their horns removed. They're trying to show that tieflings can be good, and they are a cleric. That's a sad character, but I will draw it. I guess Hellboy, like, shapes his horns. Yes. Maybe we'll do a little hell, hell, Hellboy-ish vibe on this one. Um, yeah, let me, th let me, I have, I mean, I can just give people my P.O. box what it's for but I don't remember it so let me grab it real quick <laughs> hell lad Okay. Why can't I open this bottle of water? Nope. I'll just lift the seat for a while. Honestly, I don't check my put my PO box very often because I hate driving over there. <laughs> it's kind of a pain in the ass. That that seems fair to me. Yeah. Relatable. At one point, I went over there and I hadn't gone in like three months, three or four months, and there was just a stack of returned uh, postage because one of my Patreon members moved and didn't tell me, and so I got there and and I, I had it all. And I went up to the lady. Actually, it might have been when I was getting the the box too, because I was waiting for Jonas's uh, thing. To, I didn't know it got returned. Mm. And I'm like, I have a package here. And she's like, This was this this got here like three months ago. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> she's like, What's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. No one sends me stuff. So there it is. I will post that. I'll put that somewhere. People can. Uh, if you guys want, feel free to send stuff. Just don't be weird. That's not supposed to have a J in it. One second. Kajent. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Feel free to send stuff. I'll be check. I'll check it like. I'll start checking in the first thing month. People want. Or you can let me know that things are on the way. It's like a ritualistic thing like Hellboy, I'm guessing. Every morning they wake up and grind them. Maybe. I mean, yeah, because horns grow unless you, like, really try to get rid of them. What is a rugby shape? Uh, it's a... It's two triangles strapped onto a rhombus. 
<laughs> what do you think has influenced your style the most? Uh, I mean, Frazetta is the thing that got me into like pencil sketching. Uh, and then uh, Wayne Reynolds, which he just put out a book that I, I bought, so I'm excited for that to show up in the mail. It ain't that's cool. Yeah, like uh, something Saints. Can't remember what it's called. You but yeah, it's a, it's a PO whole... box to the thing, so people know it's your PO box address. Oh, that's what the sixteen sixteen. I guess I should write PO box. Most people might not be able to tell at first glance. Yeah, that's fair. At least I would be confused. There was something weird about my post office that that's what they want it to look like. Because it's technically like a street address for the P.O. Box. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it's supposed to be. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure if you put that on an envelope, that exactly on an envelope, it'll get to me. Interesting. I think I pay like $4 a year more so that I don't have to write P.O. Box on there. <laughs> uh, by not weird, do you mean abnormal or is abnormal society and what at large? Yeah, Elliot, I would just say don't send me something if you feel like maybe someone would be mad that you sent it to them. Yeah. <laughs> Best rule of thumb, if you mailed this to your grandmother, would she be mad? And if you have a weird grandmother, then, you know, we can talk about it. But that's, that's different. Uh, just, yeah. So just Wayne, remember, yeah. The, the people you know on the internet don't really actually know you. So, yeah. There's a reason I'm not giving people my home address. Uh, what was the other thing I was saying? Oh, so Wayne Reynolds, Frank Frazetta, and... Um, Man, Yonan Vesquez is pretty big. Like, John the Homicidal Maniac is a really, really good, like, was a big, big influence on my art. And then uh, him and Ben Templesmith. Ben Templesmith. Templeton? Templeton? Templesmith. Let me look. Wormwood. The Gentleman Corpse. Ben Templesmith, yeah. Really, really cool uh, comic. He did a lot of... Uh, essentially, like... The whole comic is pencil drawn and then digitally painted. Which is, makes it look really weird. And I, I love it. I dig it. Um, sometimes I think Yona Vesquez, when I look at your art... Uh, that doesn't... I mean, like, rugby is 100% just like a bugbear gur. <laughs> yep. Like... We've we've definitely had that conversation before. Whoops, cancel. I mean, yeah. No, cancel. What's happening? Get out of here. Like the weird head shapes and like weird hair and then just like noodle bodies. One hundred percent you don't know Vasquez. Like it's just <laughs> can't get away from it. It, his stuff kind of got me away from anime, like drawing anime stuff, because I was that was that was the cartoons that I had at the time, and so I was like going from like Garfield the Cat to Dragon Ball Z to like oh you can really really emote with nothing made made me like change the way I kind of looked at the world. I even argue that like Tim Burton's in there somewhere. But, 
I like very much the character design tells the story more than the character's action aesthetics. Yeah, I mean... Character design should inform you kind of about the character, like for sure. So, something we talk about with like the silhouette. The silhouette should be very telling of the character. I think the only people, the only person on both of our lists is Frazetta. Mm hmm. Because I'm, yeah. If I'm also allowed to answer the question, uh, I'm also very much inspired by Frazetta. Um, but other than that, I tend to go a little bit more classical. Uh, I'm probably most influenced currently by a. Um, Ooh, I want to add one more. Lowish. Go for it. Lowish is definitely on my list of like. Lowish is good. Super uh, artists. Yeah. My biggest current influence is a artist I only know as Taryn Fiddler. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram, Twitter, etc., all the social medias. Uh, Huff loves. Other than that, I tend to do a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, classical art. Neoclassicism. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's just Huff loves draws uh, spicy goblins on the internet, and I love their their work. Basically, anybody that draws like really cool looking hair, I'm just enamored with. It's just like, oh my god, how how did they do this? <laughs> <laughs> so like Lowish and and Huff loves like they just their stuff is in it. Moon Mixer, same thing. Just like, oh my god, just pen art. But they make the hair look so good. I don't know how they do it. I just meant like a Gundam would upset no one, but confuse quite a few normies. Yeah, don't send me stuff because you think it'll get a rise out of me, because I'll just ignore it. Like, I will. I'll just throw it away. <laughs> just a heads up. I won't talk about it on stream. Yeah. It's just, uh, I won't even leave the post office. It's just going to go in the garbage. So, <laughs> don't send me weird stuff. That's all I'm saying. Don't send me weird stuff. Hmm. It shall be under consideration. I was going to pull a John Oliver quote, but then decided it was probably best not to give chat any ideas. Yep. Probably. Um, the person who requested this bugbear, are you in chat? I know who requested this bugbear. <laughs> are they in chat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are. It's Bry. Bry suggested. Oh, it's Bry. I think you've gotten Bry's suggestions like two or three times in the last month. I guess the dice gods are pairing us together, Bry. Yep. Um, the question: Do you like the the fox? You were not specific about what the swarm creature was. I thought it was also ferrets, but fox would be pretty good too. Cobras sounded funny. I like the idea of a cobras did sound funny, but uh, a little poetic. Justice excellent. Going okay, on. cool. I was gonna say I put it on a different layer, so if you wanted it separate, I could have done that. Is it weird that I want to start a religion just so I can wear like priest habits? A little bit. <laughs> you don't need to do the religion part. You can just wear them. Just wear them. Stop appropriating my religious.
think I'm gonna scribble in just a little bit of color here. Two hours later, fully rendered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that happened Wednesday. Uh, it's one o'clock, so that is what just happened now. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I was like, no, I've drawn something else. It was the thing that I, it was my warm-up. It, it was, was your my final warm-up. Warm yep. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. It's just, it's a, it's a bad thing because you didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm keeping you honest. Can the holy symbol also be a source or a focus for the religion? I don't see why not. I think that I think that's totally fine. I mean, in D and D could work pretty well. Sorcerers don't. Mm -hmm need focuses though in D and D, right? Because their blood is their focus. It's true. Uh, I mean, I actually I don't go know. Go fully into rules as written, but hey. Is that not rules as written? No, I think that uh, is the rules as written, but there are some um some spells still require components and you can eschew the components if you have a focus. So I would argue that certain spells still might require or could use a focus. Okay. Yeah. Not all spells need a focus. Only the spells that have a gold cost that is not consumed need a focus. The focus, yeah, replaces whatever components would be otherwise there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so... You could argue with the DM to say you are the focus. Yeah, I would I would allow that too. Like, I would kind of always put like the tattoos on people. Like, this is why I put t t tattoos on sorcerers. Tattoos or like beads or, you know, family heirlooms, whatever you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like what I always did with Kevin the Necromancer is like, uh, what was it? The spell like Animate Dead essentially costs like a thousand gold per hit dice or something. And it's like, that's unreasonable and stupid, especially if you want to be a necromancer. So I always have it be yeah. like, it might be a hundred gold, but it's like, if you can get enough onyx to make a spell focus for that price. That makes sense to me, and I'll let you do that. And so then that way, like, Kevin the Necromancer always has this, like, black skull with him, and it's like, yep, that works perfectly. Uh, Atomic, welcome in. What druid style reminds me of? Do Nate, NATO arts? What? Do NATO arts? I don't know what that is, and I don't know if I want to click on that. Um, I'm going to assume it's a artist online. Donato Gynecola? <laughs> <laughs> this link is getting less and less appealing <laughs> the more I look at it. <laughs> Rebecca Guy Guya. It's just some cool sketches. Is it? And and tons of spamware, I bet. In 5e, all spellcasters can use a focus. Yeah, focuses really should just be like spell upgrade augments. Uh, but I'm an evil sorcerer cultist. I'm not even a warlock. I'm not. <laughs> It's an Italian Magic the Gathering artist. Okay. Oh, cool. Interesting. I have to say, awesome name, Atomic Sorcery. Pretty cool. I really appreciate both of these, all of these comparisons. Because these artists are badass. Don't let it go to your head. Keep working. <laughs> Is that the joke now? I don't know. Why can't you let me be happy? I'm good. <laughs> I'm so good at art, you shut up. <laughs> let them praise me. I went to a, a bookstore yesterday that buys books, and I brought them all my old, um, like, textbooks and stuff. So these books probably cost me, like, hundreds of dollars, and they're like, we can't sell any of these. We will recycle all of them and give you $3. And I was like, deal. <laughs> I felt really stupid. But at the same time, like, I was just trying to get rid of them. So three bucks is three bucks, but... 
the, the fact that they're going to be recycled, considering yeah. that a lot of my textbooks are printed in a way that makes them very difficult to recycle, I would consider that a plus. Yep. I need a bunch of books for a photo set. Taking a bunch of local donations from like a school. Oh, nice. Okay. That's pretty cool. Dum 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 dum. I think Sakuracon is coming up next week. Next week or the week after. Probably won't be going to that, but it's here in town. So. What is that specifically? Because that's. Obviously, it's different like from an anime City Comic Con. Yeah, it's like anime, specifically anime okay. and video games and stuff. I believe. My friends always come in to like see artists, and they usually do like uh, I think they have like Final Fantasy. The last few years they've done years they've done like Final Fantasy Orchestra has come through with it. So they go for that. So they've been glued shut, printed, and speed aged weathered. Oh, gotcha. I, I've done that a few times for um, a few years back. Oh, God, it's been a while now. We went to like a thrift store and bought a whole bunch of old encyclopedias, <laughs> glued them all closed, and then hollowed them out and made magic card decks out of them or <laughs> deck boxes. Yeah. Uh, that was really fun. That's what got me into like leather crafting because it's like, I can make some really cool. Like you put foam on the top of the book and then you. Uh, press wet leather into it so it makes the yeah. like the actual like embossing is really fun i might do more of that too i have a, a bunch of little little projects that i want to work on um like that um that i just i just haven't gotten around to them because i'm trying to get everything else all my ducks in a row Da, 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 da. Have people been getting many ads today? We didn't have anybody sponsor the stream, but no one was complaining about ads. So, good question. I don't. I don't actually think I've gotten yeah. them. Any. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well uh, unfortunately, I have ad blocks. So, uh... don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Works. I mean... yeah, yeah. Sorry, it was a Finnish word. Mm. Ah, okay. 
Gotcha. Mm -hmm. It's a semi spicy Seder character photo shoot. Nice. I got like four, mm. but it also crashed a lot, so I don't know. Uh, interesting. Buttermation, welcome in. Death Kiss Wild Magic Barbarian. I will put it on the list. Maybe. Yep. Uh, there's a storm of ads right now, feeling like every two to three minutes. Interesting. I can never destroy a book like that for arts and crafts. It just feels too bad on the book. Yeah, I had a bunch of people mad at me about that when I did that, but uh, fuck it. Like, it was just going to live on a shelf and never be used again. So I feel like I gave yeah. it, I gave it purpose. There's there's certain like nonfiction books that are out of yeah. date. I don't I don't mind doing encyclopedias, like that. Bibles, and um, dictionaries. I am completely fine destroying because they are mass yep. produced and they are constantly being updated. So, rad blocker for radiation. Yeah. You must have angered the ad warlocks. That's pretty good. I think I'm done with this one. I think I. I think I'm. I want to put like a, a necklace on here. It looks pretty neat. My Wayne Reynolds is showing. <laughs> I don't get that. Uh, he does almost all of the Pathfinder art. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. He's he he's the guy who does the uh, super poofy stuff. That it's it's just like a, a a shape filled with clutter and stuff. Yep. I love him. He's great. It's pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, okay. I think I'm done. I, yeah, I want to do this just because. Just because it'll look cool. feel too bad for the book yeah there's definitely like same thing with like destroying magic cards like destroying magic cards will make the internet mad at you but at the same time like a lot of those cards are not worth anything <laughs> it's just like they're not in playing rotation and you can buy hundreds of them online for literally nothing so um, I know a lot of them that just go in the garbage. So anytime you can find like new life for that kind of stuff, I think it's very, I think that's better than just you know keeping it around. So that's my take on stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a person that thinks things have to be held too sacredly. But, okay, there we go. I think that was done. Let's roll the dice. Roll the dice. Oh, roll the one. Clockwork Construct, who's been possessed by a student wizard, now Warlock, forced into a patronage of Primus in order to stay alive. Is Primus like a robot deity? He's to... Yeah, essentially. You know where yeah. the Modras are from. Got it. Okay. So, we have a person... A ghost possessing a robot. <laughs> yes. Neat. It's like a robot lich. Da, 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 da. Oh, where'd the where'd the where'd the goblin go? What happened to the thick goblin? Goblin died. Boop. There we go. To goblins. Steal my rope and barrels. There we go. 
Okay. It's always the goblin you don't see that you should be fearing. <laughs> yeah. He's the god of mechanics, the clockwork plane. Got it. Did I do a Modron video? I can't remember now. Not that I can remember. Hmm. Uh, I know we uh, we had somebody asking for Modrons. Mm. A lot. The uh, uh, the psycho pumps are pretty close because they're also like a weirdly neutral, lawful neutral thing. Right. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Unfortunately, there's no reason for me to... This, this is another one of those things where, like, how do I show that a robot is possessed by a student who worships a lawful god? Like, none of that is visual information. This robot could literally look like anything, and that still yep. be true. So I'm not sure what I want to do. I might just draw a cool Warforged and be done with it. I mean, that sounds like the prompt to me. <laughs> You've basically just described every anime ever. Speaking of videos, can you do a dragon one? Either half dragons or baby young dragons? Something setting allows. I mean, you can check out my dragon video. <laughs> the dragon, the dragonborn video is actually more of a why you should play a why you should play dragons or half dragons than dragonborn. So I would I would check that out first. Um, I mean, I remember the dragonborn creature almost being why you should do wear creatures. It could be. It's kind of in that vein. But I think part of my argument was, if you want to play a dragon, just play a dragon. Like, just do it. It's fun. I think I started one of those too, because I have the, I have a, essentially a, what are they called? Fairy dragon? Fairy dragon. Thing that I was working on, and then I tried to turn it into a, how to draw a video and then I just gave up on it. But it was originally going to be like, oh, just play a, play a fairy dragon. I did a bunch of reading on 5,000 cent cards for D&D &D poses and God, did I catch some flack for it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Take visual motifs from courts just like Justice is Blind. Maybe. I must have missed it. No, that's no problem. Yeah, go check it out. <clears throat> I definitely need to change my thumbnail game. I think that's a big thing. So, I do need to take a look at uh, a lot of my old videos and just update the thumbnails. They don't get as much traffic as, as I would like. What was the last video we released? Psycho Pump? I think it was the Psycho Pump video. Don't know if that one didn't go well because people. I mean, it went okay. It's not a bad video, uh, wise, but like. Thought more people would be interested in psychopomps, but I don't know if people know what psychopomps are. So, yeah, yeah, it's always Guides hard to tell. I think. What's that? Yeah. Correct. Uh, I keep forgetting the meaning of the words. So. Ghosts. 
the ferryman of the spirits of the dead. Mm hmm. Okay, one. Ferret hating bugbear. Done. <laughs> Spent the entire time on that. Yeah, what time is it? One o'clock? Right. Yeah, just after. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm still good. I'll I'll do another one. I won't be able to put as much time into it. Um, 20. Don't have a 20. Okay. Natural one. A gift tinkerer. This, uh, yeah, I'm just going to read it verbatim. Gif, okay. so gif, not gif, mm -hmm. gif with Hippo. Franklin's. Yep. Tinkerer has resent, resented, I don't know if that's how you spell resented, his folk and their inability to wield magic and take in dark path of power become a gif lich. So gif lich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Skeleton hippo. Looks like I'm researching uh, hippo skulls. Oh, you're going to be happy. It's it's creepy. Yeah, they're, they're wild. Mm-hmm. I like normal robot face with a hologram on face on top, but it might just be you know, projecting. It might just look like it's projecting. Yeah, that, that's tough. I could try that, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, you guys are helping me get through an appointment at the allergist office. Ooh, yuck. I hope you're doing all right. Try to do med today, and they're making sure I don't react. That's good. It's good to do those tests. Ha 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 Look at this uh, image I found in the <laughs> post in the Discord. Oh man, hippos are too big. I don't like they it. are too big. For chat, it's a hippo skull with a human skull inside its mouth. <laughs> Just squeeze a little bit and it'll pop like a grape. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I keep seeing, um, I keep seeing videos of like, oh, did you know that it takes the same amount of force to break a carrot as it does to break your finger? And I'm like, that, that can't be true. Like, <laughs> as someone who has just obliterated carrots before, <laughs> like in a kitchen, uh, I disagree. <laughs> now. Could it be said that maybe you could bite through one of your own fingers? Maybe. Maybe. Not worth trying. Um, but, like, there's a lot of different weird mechanical pieces in there to just compare your finger to a carrot. So. Don't crunch on your fingers, people. I wish I could live to see a future archaeologist find hippo skulls after an imagery like this is gone and went extinct. Yeah. Yeah, finger bones take more pressure. Yeah, and one of the reasons I would argue that is because you can break a carrot with your fingers. So, yeah, like between your forefinger <laughs> and thumb. Your fingers, yeah, they don't break. So I don't think there might be some bullshit there. I think I think it depends on the size and shape of the carrot in which you are trying to crush. Yeah. Because what if robots kept carrots, notes on its no. body, like a strange it's way of reminding cool. itself of a rule? I mean, people do that with a pen. What would make it so special about a robot doing it? I 
I think what I was thinking about earlier today, the uh, the new, they're in Japan. They're building a, another neutrino sensor in a mountain, mm-hmm. and it's going to be this massive underwater reservoir that can detect neutrinos. Like if the human race got reset again, and then they f- discover that in two thousand years, that's going to break somebody's brain. <laughs> What is this giant yeah. gold bladed room underwater full of is it is it containing a demon? Like what's happening here? I think we're at, I think we're getting really close to like advanced civilization shit being built. Yeah, yeah. I mean where we are well past the point where where people a hundred years ago would think we were fucking witchcraft. Oh yeah. Like lived with witchcraft all over the place. You tell somebody you can you can talk with another person uh, in real time on the other side of the planet. And that is just a thing you can do anytime you want as long as as long as the connection's good. Neil deGrasse Tyson has talked a few times about the need for teleportation being stupid because we have airplanes. Um because we can we can basically go anywhere in the world fairly quickly especially like in comparison to just traversing the ocean in less than yeah. months is like yeah. uh like bananas and so really teleportation is just people being that much more lazy like they just don't want to they don't want time period and it's like man it's different so if you describe somebody like oh yeah i could be in paris later today people would be like that's impossible they think you're a witch through air, not even connected through wires. Yeah. Yeah. Robot is haunted, always has been. <laughs> hold on, hold on, Druid. Can I do something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You've drawn a very fat ground squirrel. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's also the shape I'm. I'm kind of <laughs> about to continue the because, saber, like, saber tooth ground squirrel. I think lich is uh, is mostly cape, right? So I'm. Oh yeah, like prosthetics is super advanced. Like compared to what it was ten years ago as well. So. Just waiting for the, like I said, waiting for the the eye goo that will regrow my my eyeball. That's all I want. It's coming. Somebody's going to invent it sometime. They're working on it. It's got to blend up more fish eyeballs first. Maybe play around a little bit more with 3D printers. Oh, yeah. And printing organs. I mean, they already have. There's just an FDA trials, which can take 10 to 50 years. Nice. Yeah, I was, like I said, I was working with a bunch of different people in uh, at the University of Idaho, trying to discover like what actually is required for um, regenerative retina cells in tigerfish. Tiger? I said tigerfish. That's not right. That might be right. Lionfish. Lionfish. The ones that are all like squiggly and spiky. Lionfish, probably yeah. then. Their eyeballs regrow, which is really cool. Probably because they have all them spikes and probably get poked in the eye a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is kind of like, it is funny to think about that kind of stuff because like that being an evolutionary trait, there are, um, there's example of like people that have really weird regenerative abilities like, uh, yeah. you can regrow, basically regrow your whole liver. <laughs> some people can, some oh, people yeah. can regrow their liver. Uh, I have had I have had a, a friend that has had her tonsils removed three or four times because they grow back. Uh, um, uh. Which is not uncommon, but it's, it's rare. 
Like, it wasn't like a medical oddity. They're like, yeah, that can happen. <laughs> so, uh, like, it, it's super weird. I don't know of anybody that's like regrowing a limb, but I've seen like children that regrow like fingertips and stuff. That's pretty cool. Medical science is, is bullshit. <laughs> Uh, a lot of it lot is of it and is has always been yeah. try something and see if it works and well if it I doesn't just... work then then talk to the ethics board no i was speaking more on like the human body's capacity for healing is bananas and a lot yeah. of a lot of medical science is really just like make the person comfortable until their body fixes itself um or doesn't <laughs> those are the two, those are the two yeah. types of medical science versus like when you have to do like a medical intervention or a surgical intervention, that very much is like, okay, we have to do something. Um, and then the body will recover from that. Like we cause a different, less damaging trauma. Which yeah, is always well, really cool. Cut out the old trauma and let the let the replace it in a way lesser where the body trauma can heal. fix itself. Yeah. Which is essentially what happened to my eyeball. Like I got trauma in a way that wasn't gonna heal, so we had to do surgery. Because my body's like, wait, why is there blood in the eyeball? <laughs> That's not normal. What do we do about it? I don't know. Keep bleeding? Okay. <laughs> What's our response to this? Uh, keep bleeding. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Just pour more blood at it. Fill it full of platelets. That'll solve everything. That usually works. <laughs> Remove the trauma, add a zipper. Essentially, yeah. And hippo skulls are so weird and lumpy. Da, 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 da. More bleeding. Yeah. And how many sets of tusks do hippos have? T uh, four. And then they just have a bunch of really big teeth. Four sets, yep. Two on each side. Two in the front. Eight teeth altogether. Which is still too many? Yeah, monster. See, it's still too many. They didn't say what kind of student he was, so he's going to be a geography student. I'm hesitant to do what I'm doing here. I've created a solar system, but that moon is way too close. That's like kill the planet close. Oh well. What is this weird ground squirrel? <laughs> it sorry, Druid. <laughs> it does look Bottom like a, it does look like a predator version of a ground squirrel. Wah. It does also look like a hippo, but I'm just saying. Like, turns out a hippo looks like a predator ground squirrel. We'll uh, 
I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Do, do, do. Yeah, adding the synapse here is going to help. And getting the, the shading correct is also going to help. Squirrel has come for revenge. <laughs> Someone look for peanut butter. Peanut butter is not gonna not gonna satiate this one. You need you're gonna need a uh, a watermelon oh, or chow, a chow. pumpkin. Oh, chow, chow, chow. Yeah, pumpkins. Are good. Or the blood of the human that was dumb enough to to raft down this river. I, I, I think it's wild that we still that, that we call hippos herbivores. I mean, like, yes, that like plants are what they prefer to eat, but they eat people. Do they eat people though, or do they just kill people? Maybe a little bit of, maybe mostly mm -hmm. they they kill people, but they, they I'm pretty sure they. Look, you can't kill somebody by biting them without swallowing a no, little bit of flesh no, and blood. No, no, no. Let's look at the let's look at the picture you posted. Like, are those molars chewable? Because like they can't tear. It would just have to chomp, chomp, chomp. I I've seen a he uh, a horse eat, her, <laughs> uh, eat, eat a mouse. A mouse That's so. like this, this, this. Well, I mean, so if if the hippo ate somebody whole, I could see that. But like, they don't have the they don't really have the the tearing functionality for like I I'm not saying they're predators. I'm not saying we should we should re redesignate them as, as carnivorous, but I I'm just... All I'm saying is if you blended up everything into soup, then any animal could eat it. <laughs> should it eat it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's where I'm getting at. Like if you give a cow if you give a cow just like beef no, that's wrong too. Um <laughs> what would a cow eat? I don't know if a cow would be able to eat people. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what yeah. would happen. So, like, cats are... Uh, um, cats are obligate carnivores. Yeah, like, they just they can't digest plants. That's why they hork up grass. Intentionally hork it up. So, like... Uh, I don't know if hippos are classified that way because they just don't eat people or if they can't eat people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Definitely well, kill people. Pretty much, 100%. pretty much every herbivore can digest animal protein, like pants. just not in like large amounts. Because what, I think it's probably mostly because uh, it's hard to be an herbivore and not eat bugs. That's fair. That is definitely fair. <laughs> it's my argument for every uh, every person that decides to be like a PETA activist. It's <laughs> like it's like if you if you die and nobody knows, your cat will eat your face. I'm just it's gonna eat your face. So now we're no longer talking about like morality. We're just talking about can it and will it eat you? <laughs> Western welcome. He's yes, yes, it will. <laughs> yep. <laughs> If you want to decide not to eat meat, that's totally great. I have no problem with that. It's good on you. It's a lifestyle choice. And that is your complete prerogative, and I have no problems. 
Don't force it on me. I I like leather shoes. I'm just putting. I'm just gonna. Yep. Leather is great. Leather is great. If My the aliens messed up, and I need a lot of animal protein. Actually, if the aliens actually come down and they're like, "Ah, oh, yes, we have sent our forerunners here, the Cattlemen's," and we're like, "Oh crap," <laughs> <laughs> then I'll worry. I'll worry about my boots. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, you're wearing its skin. <laughs> well, there's plenty of other stuff we can make leather out of. It doesn't have to be cows. It doesn't. That's just the animal we eat the most, and so better I'm... not to uh, better not waste. Better not waste it, yeah. That, that is one thing that I think uh, a lot of people like maybe don't realize. I, I hear a lot of like the, the animal activist sort of people being like, but like... In the good old days, people used every part of the animal. Well, we do that nowadays too. I care like nothing, nothing that anybody can sell is going to waste, because that's not how capitalism works. What was it? There was something I was reading about. Um, like, fundamental waste because it's cheaper to just oh the shark fits. That's what it was. Yep. Like people are people are catching sh sharks and just cutting off the, the shark and, and dropping the still living yeah. shark back into the water. Yeah, it's like that's super frustrating. It's yeah. And then now they're they're like they're starting to make shark meat more valuable, and people are then like killing the sharks and leaving the fins. It's like why are you leaving things? <laughs> just stop leaving things. <laughs> take them, take them back with you. But apparently they're like the weirdly way they're taxed. They get charged for bringing different things in so that's why they do it it's like well that that seems like a thing that can be fixed very easily to stop that from happening yeah laziness laziness and greed people these are the problems and fundamental misunderstanding of the of the um, people making the rules mm. not understanding the system they're trying to regulate There was a, I was watching a thing about um, farming octopus because uh -huh. octopus is becoming more popular and they're like, hey, we should start farming this. And people are like, no, you can't do that. And it's like, well, if we don't, people are still going to still gonna hunt it. So I think farming it is much more reasonable. Yeah. Um, those are the kind of like, conversations I like yeah. to have about about that kind of stuff instead of it just being like, this is bad. It's like, well, why is it bad? And let's talk about it. Let's figure out why. What do you think about Pizza Tower? I, what is Pizza Tower? It's a game? What part of the octopus do you want to eat? The tentacles grow back, so even teach them to trade for tentacles. That's that's a weird gray area. <laughs> they didn't it's have... also probably not really worth it because uh, octopuses only live about two years anyway. Yeah, that that's kind of the the biggest part of it is like the farming process is tough because of the weird way that have like solitary creatures they are. But uh, them as a farmable commodity is not a bad, bad system. I don't think you just have to do it right because it's complicated. But same thing with like squid. Squid are squid live real fast, real, real hard. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's just like we should be eating these. We we should be eating more squid, mm -hmm. and and there should be incentives to not hurt sharks at all. Yep. Because they're sharks are very important. Our ocean's immune system. Okay, there is my robotic ghostly academ.
It's a platformer inspired by Wario Land, basically. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. They've been seen to purposely dismember themselves for projectiles at annoying fish. Uses your arms as ammunition. I think it's probably more like a lizard tail, but that's it would be interesting to look into. Um, and it's also definitely not any not any uh, tentacle because the male octopuses have their genitalia on the end of one and uh, one tentacle, and that one usually gets protected very. <laughs> Very jealously guarded. So that goes into like the eth efficacy, not efficacy, but like the ethic, ethical Ethics principles of. of of like of farming and stuff. Because there are some creatures that we do that to, like sheep. Like we shear them because it doesn't hurt them, and it's it helps them. Like in in some ways, it helps them. Um, not yeah. all sheep, but some sheep actually need it because we've we've bred them that way. So um, so that that's. That it can be part of the farming process. Like if there's, a... <laughs> I think the the Hitchhiker's Guide is the best thing. Um, the the restaurant at the end of the universe, where they breed cows that want to be eaten, and it's like people wanted an ethical form of meat, and this is it. <laughs> like the only way to eat meat in the future is by having a an animal that wants to be eaten, and if you don't eat it, you're being rude, and it uh, it's. Like, shame on you for not letting this creature fulfill its purpose. <laughs> and uh, I like that. I like that concept. It's really weird. <laughs> it's really weird and kind of hurts your brain a little bit to think about. Yeah. So, and those are always fun for me. Fiction really is the best place to get good philosophy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I'm done with this one. I'm going to move on to the next one. What do I got? What do I got here? Is she eating its arm? Yeah, there was a, there was a, an episode of Farscape, which I don't know if people know that. It was a Jim Henson sci-fi space adventure. Um, their spaceship was a giant whale, and the pilot, whose name was Pilot, um, was like uh, symbiotically grafted to the the shark whale whale ship. Um, and at one point in time, they get, like, marooned in space, and the whale doesn't want to do anything. The whale's not going to die. And because the thing, the pilot is connected to the whale, they decide to start eating the pilot. And the pilot's like, please don't do that. I don't like it when you cut off my arms. And they're like, yeah, but it grows back. And he's like, yeah, but I don't like it. Like, you guys are assholes. <laughs> so, moral quandaries. Moral quandaries, people. You shouldn't want to be eaten. Stop prey shaming me. It's a good book. You guys should definitely read... Uh... The Checker's Guide. Eight. Eldritch Horror that wants to be a wizard instead. My problem with drawing Eldritch Horrors is that once you draw them, they're no longer Eldritch. They are... They're just normal horrors, you know? Yeah. Because you've made them parsable. Mm-hmm. If that is the correct word. Just do a bunch of squiggles squirrel, in her. That's essentially what I'm going to do, yeah. I'm going to draw Black Mage. With all the Eldritch eyeballs I can muster. It's weirder the more you think about it. Yep. Yep. That's <laughs> what we call uh, existential dread. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> and drawing hands is actually way easier when you're just drawing the bones. That's why I always draw the bones first. Pro tip, draw the bones. Wizard. 
Eggs are another good example of that. It's not actually eating part of the chicken. Doesn't hurt the chicken. Yep. Eggs are ethical. Who would think an ethics... Uh, I'm never really good at those now that I think about it. <laughs> ethics Being, are pretty you know, easy. <laughs> well, when it comes to animals, I guess. Depends what you mean by ethics, I guess. Yeah. I, I have no issues eating meat. I don't know. I will pre I will feel pretty annoyed if someone calls me evil for eating meat, so you know. I didn't kill the animal. Uh, killing animals for the purposes of food can't be evil because the entirety of nature relies on things dying to maintain balance. Yep. Yes. It doesn't really I, make sense when people get mad at you for that, you know. Yeah. I, I really don't like having conversations about the the ethics of meat consumption with, with people who are sure that it's wrong because right. inevitably they don't understand nitrogen cycles or any nutrient cycle or ecology. So it's 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 always a, a an exercise in, in moderating frustration. There is mm -hmm. there is and I will, the only counter I will have to what you said is um is there is a way to have a conversation about ethical farming right that's yeah. where the conversation should lie um, is what is what you're doing ethical not that farming is inherently unethical right like that's that's the biggest yeah. problem um and that's where i think like the the super fundamentalist PETA people uh kind of just miss the point completely because yeah. they're they're not willing to have that yeah. conversation and so at one side of the scale you have um you have people that just want to not hurt animals and don't eat it's like that's fine and then you have people that are trying to like and this is like i said this is the fringe maybe even anecdotally inaccurate version right of people yeah. like trying to grain feed their cats it's like you're killing your cat because you're an idiot yeah right so if that's real that's not cool uh, a lot of more militant vegans environmentalist people don't Look at animals. I find I just hate humans, and farming crops still kills animals by necessity. Yeah, yeah, and and so it's like, there's there's a whole bunch of of um, that's why I'm saying ethics are usually pretty easy because it, it's really just a matter of what is the problem and then what's the the proper way to do it. So like I would agree that our a lot of our like large farming practices in the United States are unethical and should be changed. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I we would stop. Also agree that that doesn't mean we stop having farms. Like it just doesn't. It's just there are better ways to do it and uh when i like in idaho a lot of the restaurants i worked for they were owned by the same people they just had a couple different restaurants when they locally sourced their their beef they would get it from local farmers and they would go there and make sure that what they were doing was like up to snuff for what they wanted to do because they're like yeah we don't want to buy huge processed meat we want local like happy cows right happy cows happy food that was their process their their thought process so um, yeah. So overall, I, I think I think the conversation just needs to be polite, and that's the, kind of the problem you're getting at. Is like you can't go into a you, you can't have a conversation with somebody who already has their mind made up. Yeah. Um, and that's that's where I think a lot of like the fundamental weird PETA shit we see on the internet is is that level of just like people being off off their rocker and like. Yep. Off the edge intentionally, of, of intentionally yeah. obtuse because intentionally they don't want obtuse, that's to learn anything. Mm -hmm. They yeah. don't want to. They, they don't want to be convinced. Yep, we're ju we're just seeing the really angry people that are just either trying to, like I said, trying to troll or trying to be uh, angry without without any rational any rational thought to it. Um, yep. And that's something we should be vigilant about. I mean, like, yeah. Specifically I, with, with farming practices, an, like the type of poisons and stuff we've been using have we've found being really detrimental to like different ecosystems and like what we're doing with farm waste and vegetable waste. Like there's a whole bunch of things that makes it a huge industry. And I think all of that stuff is really like interesting and valid and worth talking about as a general public because the more you know about this stuff, like the more you can be informed and not kind of get trapped into that uh, 
I'll need his murder thing. Hmm. We can also use less food and less preservatives and no fillers and chemicals and hormones and healthy food. Yeah, that, like that's another big problem with like the scale of our food. If we had a better system for um, dissemination of food, yeah, instead of having these huge, large farms, which I mean, monopolies are kind of the problem everywhere. They're just they're bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we had more local farming, which has been kind of gotten rid of because of uh, city growth and like urban sprawl, uh, we would all be healthier. <laughs> We would just be healthier because that would be there would be less need for that stuff. So everybody's yeah. carbon footprint would also be way smaller yep. because nobody eats any food that is produced within a hundred miles of where they live. And if we all did that, then shipping costs would be way less, which means less fossil fuels would be used being used to to send me avocados from South Mexico. Yep. That is something I think that is kind of interesting. Kevin the Necromancer is running us through a campaign right now where um, one of the cities we're in just basically doesn't have any food because it got it gets all of its food from shipping and there's something stopping the boats from coming in because mm. it's on like essentially in a little island surrounded by a weird thing. Yeah, and it's like that's that's a good problem to have. Like that's that's a a problem that your party can't directly fix, but like. You know, if you can figure out what's causing the weird forest to block travel, like that's great. Like, right? You can you can use those kind of real world principles on a smaller scale to to make some pretty interesting stories. Yeah, totally. If only Kevin the Necromancer would stop railroading us <laughs> into cutscenes that we have no control over, I'd be much happier. <laughs> Elaborate. I wish to know more. <laughs> uh, we fought a sea serpent. We were like level four, level three at the time, and he had us fight a level twenty sea serpent that was just going to destroy our boat. And it's like, well, that's not fun. And he's like, well, it's it's supposed to be just like an event that happens, and you guys have to figure out how to survive it. I'm like, okay, that's that sucks, but all right. <laughs> and then we had to fight the thing again later. And it's like, okay, so we can't fight this thing. Why do we keep fighting this thing? Like, what has happened? So. He pushes, he pushes the narrative by putting the characters into unwinnable situations. And then we have to deal with the fall off. And it's like, I want to I wanna be able to affect the world. I want to be able to affect the mm. world a little bit. That's fair. So I get what he's doing. And like, from a video game perspective, it's a great like cutscene, jump cut. Hey, we're, we're changing scenery, you know? Not for D&D, though. Yeah, for D&D &D it feels less good because you just... Like, if you don't tell them directly, like, hey, this is a cutscene... We're doing something. It just feels like your characters are just useless. And it's like, all right, I guess I'll just sit here and die because that's what we're supposed to do. So I'll wait for that. Yeah, losing player agency seems to be, you know, one of the big. It's my biggest. Sometimes. It's my biggest pet peeve. Like I, I almost shut off when it happens. <laughs> when people do it, it's yeah. just like, oh, cool, I kill my character. Like what? Like I just kill him. I just kill him. I don't want to play anymore. Bye. It's like I probably shouldn't have that response, but like, <laughs> but I do <laughs> every time. And every time I feel like an asshole later, it's like, sorry. It's just like, ooh, ooh, it drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. Hey, you know what would be fun? If you played my character for a while. Great. <laughs> well, I don't want to do that. Then stop, then stop taking fucking doing me it. out of the <laughs> fucking game. <laughs> oh, I lost it. I lost it again. Bum, bum, bum. Too long to read. We need more locally sourced everything. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Never liked it in a video game. Yeah, one of my least favorite things in video games is when they, like, they put you in a cutscene, but then you still have to walk. <laughs> and it's like, oh, don't, yeah, yeah. don't do this. Like, it was interesting the first time it happened. And I think the first time I remember is, like, in, in the first Dead Space, where, like, they would, uh, someone would start talking to you on your HUD, and you're like, okay, and you would just keep walking down a hall. But then, like, then all of a sudden you realize, like, oh, I can't raise my gun. I can't do anything. I just have to walk, and I have to walk slowly. It's just, like, this is the worst. This is the worst thing. 
that that you've ever anything's ever done to me in a video game. Like, it's just automated war. Yeah, it's like if it, if it's I, a cutscene, just take all the agency away. Like just yeah. don't do it. Don't. I feel the same way about quick time events. Yeah. <laughs> The illusion of agency is not agency. Players can tell when it's an illusion as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the I think the thing is is uh, writers can't writers can't tell, which is probably why it happens so often. Yeah. It's really easy to get lost in the weeds when you're writing and be like, oh, this is going to be so cool and I'm going to tell them all this good information that they're going to need to know. Skip. Skip. Yep. <laughs> and, then, and then Aaron Hansen says, wait. Oh, this is so boring. Skip it all. Yep. Wait, what am I doing? What just happened? Yeah. Yeah. My own D D games are on pause as well, so Are you DMing any of them or just playing them? Um neither. Both uh, both games that I DM and uh, play in are just, you know, on pause. Bummer. Or dying. We could play some uh Daggerheart, I guess. If people can play some Daggerheart. Yeah. Daggerheart. My first impressions uh, weren't the highest. I, I yeah, quick glance. I don't like the system. Like I just, Same. it's not. <laughs> it's it's not interesting. But I haven't played uh, it, so I don't want to like. I don't want to just be like, "Ooh, stupid!" Like first glance. Yeah. First glance, I was like, "Uh, no thanks." <laughs> but we'll see. I want to try it. My I still want to try. Personal it. thoughts God, were like, just yeah. yeah, my personal thoughts was you need a very well jiving group of people who mm -hmm. have the same idea to tell a story together yeah who want gamified it's more of a storytelling mode instead of like a game yeah, yeah. It, it it really does feel like it's made for for critical roles table yeah like yeah they're perfect for it normal people <laughs> my group hell no yeah yeah i definitely need the gamification i um, think i could get my table to play it but it would it would take a lot of hand holding. Yeah, I think that also so DM needs to do so much work in that. Yeah, that's true too. It's a lot of responsibility just for a game master. That is, I think that's kind of my issue with, um, like Kevin the Necromancer. He writes good stories, um, but he, I think he sometimes forgets to include the players, like include us into it. And so yeah. him and Lars both have the same, like, similar storytelling style, which makes sense because they've been friends forever. Um, and so they will they will sometimes just start, I don't want to say monologuing, but like, okay, so the story's going. And it's just like, well, can we can we do anything? No, we're not allowed to do Okay, we're just, we're just, well, we're just following along. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> like, and it just goes, and it's like, all right, here we go. Um, and that's where I, like, that's where I hit butt heads. Um, whereas... Whereas I try to, I try to make my story develop, and I, it's, I failed a lot of times doing this, but I try to make my story develop through player action, like directly, and sometimes that slows the game down because I'm waiting for somebody to do something to kick off an event, and so it's it's definitely a it's definitely a balancing act that I think is is just something everyone has to figure out. Uh, Buttermation asks, if you met a clone, would you tell them they're a clone, or would you help them gain an identity? Uh, I mean, Star Trek has answered that. Rick and Morty has answered that. Uh, Farscape answered that. <laughs> it really depends on how the clone works. Because um, like, if I met a clone of myself, do they know that they're not a clone? How do I know I'm not a clone? Like, all of a sudden, there are two me's, like, one-to-one. -one. Uh, and it would have to be a pretty weird discussion. And also, I don't know if it matters. Like, who owns your stuff if you are all of a sudden cloned? So yeah, 
that's a it's a that's a moral dilemma that's been around for a very long time. Um, the problem with video games now talk at you. The problem with video games now talk. Hold on a second. It's the problem with video game. Now talk at you and not to you. So I'm getting tired of listening to a person that isn't even interested in my character. Give me an example. Dude. Give me an example. Um, what would you? What would the mind of a maniac? Mind? Oh my god! Am I like having a stroke? What's going? <laughs> kind of sounds like. What it. What would the mind of a maniac mind feel with forever? And would it ever a moment of sanity, or would not time heal insanity? I, Buttermation, I. Ouch, my brain. It's not. It's not you. Rook. It's just <laughs> yep. you know, the messages are kind of iffy. It's a request translation. Okay, as long as, as long as I'm not having a stroke, because those last two were really hard to read. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if autocorrect is fucking you over, or English is not your first language. But none of that made sense. Yeah, and Raven Master, same same thing. I think what you're trying to say is like, video games don't interact with your character anymore. In which case, I'm trying to trying to think of a good example of that. Um, it's like I think Elden Ring is probably one of the better better kind of RPGs that has come out recently. And Baldur's Gate three is good too, but Baldur's Gate is very much not that what you're saying. Um, Baldur's Gate is directly RPG heavy, whereas Elden Ring just kind of story happens around you. Uh, and there is no dialogue. So I could see that kind of being your point, but I don't know. I just skip all the cutscenes. So I don't know. Mm. Well, uh, speaking of Baldur's Gate, I had some people question my sanity when I said Baldur's Gate isn't even in my top 10 games ever. I think it's really good, but I also... Um... I wouldn't say it's an amazing game. It's a very good game, but it's, it's not, game. certainly not my favorite. I don't think... like None of the story captivated me enough to care more than just it being fun to play with my friends so yeah. um i i do think it's the best game based off of a tpt rpg that has come out within the last 15 yeah. years what about dark alliance <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, dark alliance is bad dark alliance is bad um buttermation there's a really good episode of farscape i think you should watch to answer your questions uh, there's a giant plant that clones everybody on board it's great mm. It's great. It ends with uh, the main character playing rock, paper, scissors with himself. So, yeah, go check that out. <laughs> uh, for example, I'm hitting constant uh, Baldur's Gate 3 conversations with no options, but I'm stuck listening to the other order of all of their... But I'm stuck listening to the orders of all of their men mentality, and I have no input. Don't worry, it's not just you. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think Baldur's Gate 3, like I said, it's really fun. The mechanics are great. It runs pretty well, which is, you know, they had a year to do that, so I think good on them. Um, I think there are lots of stories, which is great, and, like, the characters are fun. Like, each character is really cool, so if you, like, like one of them, you can follow the storyline, which is great. Like, that's something that's kind of fallen by the wayside for a lot of games. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I'm just not. I'm just not generally interested in most of the characters, so yeah. which is not of, not a critique. It's just me. I I I'm not interested in, in massive like deep diving lore for characters. I want to just I want to play a game. I want mechanics. Um, you do seem a gameplay type. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm I'm big on gear and I'm big on trying things. And that was my probably biggest critique for Baldur's Gate three, which is also my critique for fifth edition, is there's not a lot of options. <laughs> Which, uh, which is why I like Pathfinder uh, over Dungeons and Dragons, is because like there's a lot of little ways to finesse things. The feat system mm -hmm. in Five E is just not complex enough, um, which I think is why a lot of people multi-class, because that's how you kind of fine tune and finesse character. more. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Baldur's Gate, the the problem with D and D based video games is always that it has to be more restrictive than it could be in the game. So like. As, as simple as 5e is, Baldur's Gate 3 is more restrictive, which is, I think, it's like its biggest downside. Um, but yeah. but people that love love the storytelling, like it's a really good. It, it has a lot of story. Like it has it has a cohesive flow that you can follow, and everyone has their own path, which is really cool. So like, not a lot of video games have that. 
and I think that's that's a good boon for them. I love Mass yeah, Effect. Said so they couldn't get into get far for one of the weird kids' nightmare. Yeah, mm. I, I I never played Mass Effect. Uh, Baldur's Gate three story is a really bad D and D game. To be fair, if you think about it, yeah. how it begins. No, because it's... everyone hates each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my biggest problem with with Baldur's Gate three. Like, uh, the first time I played through the game, I played with four people. Played with four people, so we didn't need any of the NPCs, and we eventually just accidentally or inadvertently killed all of them. And the game was really fun. The game was really fun without any of the storyline whatsoever <laughs> yeah that's uh, fair. and that that was good that's great and then the next time we like we each picked an npc and played through that and that's been fun that was cool too to like see like lazelle's whole story and shadow heart's story um but it's it's good for a different reason like at that point we're like yeah cool let's watch this let's watch this narrative play out and i think those are fine too um but pathfinder simplified via reorganization 5e simplified by removing uh, non-core mechanics. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a good way to look at it. What time is it here? Two o'clock? Should we keep going? Should we do another one? This one was kind of... I haven't done like a joke one yet today. Should we Go for do it. something silly and stupid? Let's find out. Get something absolutely serious. Serpent folk with a mask and a barbaric half plate. Perhaps a collection of humanoid skulls attached to the belt. Oh, that's mine. Is that yours? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I lost Sexy Snake Lady for the last one. Works for me. It wasn't the request specifically, it was a seven folk, so I let it vague. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chair's falling over, here we go. Added belt of skulls just for you. Makes sense, I like it. I don't know, generally when I give suggestions, I just give what whatever the artist was like. <laughs> Sometimes you just need suggestions that you really like doing. Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah. A barbarian, right? I have to say about the GIF undead thing, kind of reminds me of Ein Gaul from Overlord. I don't think you guys have watched it. Hey, I before. haven't, yeah. No, I haven't. Is Eisen the, the weird undead super powered lich guy that's like a thousand levels higher than everybody else? Yes. Okay, I know what you're talking about then. What a boring concept for a, <laughs> an anime. <laughs> <laughs> I love the art style, like, they did a really good job. But every time I see a clip of it, it's just like, I, I, I think we've talked about this before, but like, I assume that anime is just a power fantasy anime. Like, yes, but it's also a, like a political anime about what happens when something so powerful just shows up. So he's also just a nuke. He's also very evil, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, all the clips yeah, I see a, of that is just like, ah, you see, I'm immortal and I, I can auto kill your entire army. It's like, that seems boring. Why? Like, there's no conflict here. There's actually a specific episode where he has a spell to solve everything, and the episode is on purpose kind of boring because he ruins the story with it. Okay. <laughs> because he has a spell for everything, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like cool, like DM sets of cool, like obstacles. But he's like, I have a spell for this. It's kind of the point. Yeah. That's a fair point, Butter. I like the Overlord games as a kid, though. Yeah, that's, that's what I initially thought you were talking about, too. But, Sorry. No, that's alright. We figured it out. Good. That's uh, good to know. I've had a lot of people tell me about that show. Probably because of the skulls. I draw lots of skulls. 
It is I. Yeah, it's probably the skulls. <laughs> What kind of mask is it supposed to be? Did it say? Uh, no, it's just any kind. Just a mask? Alright. Though I guess you could extrapolate and make it also, I guess, barbaric. I'm gonna go big old horns. Did you, see, pretty big. did you see that there's a guy trying to like clone giant mutant sheep in Montana? No. <laughs> What's going on in Montana? Uh, some guy got arrested because he was essentially stealing, stealing or transporting. I think it's, I think the the criminal thing he was thing was for transporting like great horned, which are an endangered species, uh, embryos and semen like across state lines. <laughs> but he was doing it for the purpose of like trying to get the biggest horned, like just beefy ass sheep, so that he could hunt them. And it's just like, all that right. Makes it illegal. Well, cloning is illegal. Uh, transporting endangered species across anywhere is also illegal because you you can't like you're not allowed to fuck with them, That's let alone bad. try to breed them yourself. How the hell did he get access to that thing? Yeah, that was that was the big question. Is like who's Murka. selling this guy? Who's selling this <laughs> guy big horn sheep semen? Like what the fuck? What's going on? That's uh, that is seems like a very weird thing for them to do considering like people already uh that like there are established crossbreeds of of large goats for ibex mm -hmm. uh, uh and that should be available for him so i, I don't understand why he would go to all the trouble of of doing that himself money when he could just <laughs> Get a couple of ibex and and you know do goats instead of sheep, which are easier to raise because they eat a lot more stuff. You're forgetting the money. Did it, you ever watch Jurassic it, Park? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nobody asked if we should be doing this. Young. Why are we doing this? <laughs> no, oh, yeah, I have no yeah. idea, Druid. Like it's just. It's it's batshit insanity. Like, the guy kind of created his own his own problem, right? Yep. Yeah. It's on the news this morning. It's pretty funny it's, to me. It is pretty Reminds funny. Reminds me of a dude grabbed the uranium, grabbed the uranium and a snake to try to make a super yeah. snake. Yeah, some guy stole huh. stole a bunch of uranium and. Got himself bit by a snake trying to give himself superpowers. <laughs> Long story short, no superpowers. I th don't know if he died or not, but <laughs> radiation poisoning. Well, and snake poisoning. Like, <laughs> what are these? What's this? What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Yeah. Very uh, sure of himself of uh, not dying from that. Yep. So if my speech is falling apart, it's kind of like... No, you sound... Sound fine to me. Feel fine to me. You're making sense. I guess I'm so more self-conscious about it. <sighs> Was he high or something? You're, you're Probably. still doing a thousand times better than, than poor Buttermation stacks. <laughs> Not to call you out, yes. Butter, but... Uh. <laughs> that was really only the one. It was just the one. It was yeah. It was really it the was one just one. I have a problem when I'm on Twitch, because uh, like if I'm in somebody else's stream, I try to respond at a speed at which would be adequate in stream, like if I was talking to somebody. But I'll do it so fast that I'll like I'll just screw up all of the uh, like typo like spelling errors. <laughs> and our friend Sierra would constantly be like, "What the fuck are you trying to say?" <laughs> I'm like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> I got excited and tried to say something. So I'm a little more, a little more 
deliberate with my my typing now. Hmm, that's fair. I used to be a hyper typer as well when I was younger. Back when I was playing World of Warcraft, like I could type very fast. Yeah, not same. so much anymore. Yeah, it's a bit of practice. Wait, you said plate mail, right? Half plate. Half plate, okay. Uh, barbaric, so you can, you know, any kind is enough. See, I was thinking barbarian, but I didn't know how much armor to put on here. Oh. Maybe I left you too vague. I'm having to simplify my messages in the limit, so it's a bit of an issue. I'm shrinking them down. Ha, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that does explain a lot. People say less is more, but a lot of times they just want less. <laughs> just, say, just say less. That was not directed at you. It's just in general. Like, That's fair. Just say less. That was something I had to like learn from um, like giving speeches and stuff. It's really easy to kind of go off on a tangent or just start yeah. kind of. Not noodling. What's the other word for speeching? Going off on a tangent. What's the word? Shoot. I'm unsure. Meandering. Meandering with speech. Yeah, that sounds like Rambling. It. That's the word I was looking for. Um, that is something I had to learn very hard streaming here. Something that I thought I was good at when I worked at the university. Not rambling. Uh, and then I discovered that, no, I'm horrible at it. So it's definitely something that everyone's got to work on. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. What is the important thing I am trying to say? And then say nothing else. Hmm. That hat is strong. <laughs> yeah. I think I've had more ads today, specifically the second half of the stream, and that's for YouTube and the rest of the day. Yeah, usually if somebody uh, if somebody does a super chat, I will turn off the ads. So uh, most likely that's what's going on. Nobody sponsored the stream today, so. I gotta make my I gotta make my like twenty five cents somehow. <laughs> Only twenty five. Yeah, like the ad revenue on live streams is not not great. It's yeah. all about that super chat. Fair enough. I'll probably make like a dollar or something. Mm -hmm. either a lucky or unlucky goblin yeah oop phone call one second hippo man looks cool though thanks you did well on the skull real well <sighs> doesn't look quite so much like a, a evil ground squirrel anymore no no it does not no one wouldn't think that's a herbivore skull at first glance that is yeah if live streams don't work if we try to undead streams we can try an undead stream what's an undead stream I don't know <laughs> <laughs> draw nothing but undead things
Random Tension 55. I've been watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares recently. Nice. It's been interesting. Are you watching the European one or the English one? Or the American one? Uh, American one, because they're usually more horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Drama field. Yep. The, the uh, British that's ones not are... Just because, yeah, that's not just because our restaurants are worse. No, it's it's 100% a choice. <laughs> The British ones yeah, are like been... really uplifting, and I like them. Yeah, the US one is edited interestingly. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I started watching those back in the day, just for the editing. Like I just wanted to watch. It was like baffling to me how they were doing it. It's like, wait a minute, that's from a different day. <laughs> like this is, what's this going is on? Here? Two years ago, they did all kinds of weird stuff. It's doing yeah, you walked it in the kitchen makes sense. Yeah. How would you draw cloud hair? Eh, 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 eh. I have to wait for the stream to catch up so I can see. <laughs> it's just an ice cream well, cone. <laughs> I didn't think you would take it that way. I meant it literally, but that also works. Cloud is just is just a bobblehead with an ice cream cone on his head. <laughs> I didn't even think about you would consider the character Cloud. <laughs> no. Oh, you like, my question. So, uh, so someone had me draw uh, like a wind genasi with cloud hair on Wednesday. Yep. And. Oh. Um, I thought about it for a little, like, I think they might have wanted, like, Luffy's hair, which is, like, the, uh... One Piece. Oh, yeah, no, One Piece. Piece. No, no. The new, uh, gear he has, yeah. Um, which it, well, I think what they wanted was more, like, wood block print style clouds. Um... Which he has, mm. like, he's got some weird, like, Super Saiyan transformation thing that Corvus was talking about, where he's got cloud hair. And, uh, and I don't know, I just, it, it seemed more sense to me that they would basically just be, like, off gassing steam off their head the entire time. And just having, like, I, I little kinda, goofs. Kind of, because I'm trying to draw a dragon kin that's uh, very strong with the element of air. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was called with clouds. And I'm like, this looks like just cotton candy. A little bit. Yeah. It's like they have a ton of wool everywhere. Just poof. Non stop poofing. Uh oh. Did OBS just crash? What just happened? Well, it hasn't happened in the stream yet. That was weird. That was super weird. <sighs> Whatever. Someone in chat asked, how do you draw lightning here? Same kind of thing. Basically just get your shape and then uh, add lightning around it. I, I think the people I've watched draw different kinds of elemental hair kind of all struggle with the same thing because... There's, there's two ways to draw hair. One is clumping. So you either have to, like, I don't think you could turn a hair clump into lightning, right? Like, lightning doesn't look like this. Lightning never clumps. So mm. your options are either it's a bald person that has lightning on their head, or they have hair that has lightning on it, right? Like, you kind of have yeah, to make yeah. that decision. Or lightning in it. In it, yeah. So, like, you could do... Cause, and then if, if that's the case, like... Think about Zillion from the Time Wizard, <laughs> right? He's just got, like, a big poofy hair that goes up, and then there's lightning out of his eyes. Like, that's how they kind of deal with it. Because, um, mm. like, if, if you had lightning and it, like, came out of your shocked hair, you'd probably cut your hair. <laughs> Wouldn't you? So, like, that's, you really have to just decide what what shape is important and then how does the element affect that. So if you're drawing fire... Um, 
you probably want instead of strands you're just going to have clumps of fire coming out right and then how and where does that come out it shouldn't flow like hair because it's fire it's not hair so you kind of have yeah. to you kind of have to make those decisions art tutorials with rook yep really i think instead of doing art tutorials i think what i'm better at is just like conceptual uh, conceptual discussions or mild lectures yeah mild lectures that's a good way to look at it would be interesting though i think i'm best at critique because <laughs> something i run into a lot with my friends making games and like talking to people in things i worked at is like a, a lot of time people don't want to when they don't self-critique really what they're doing is they're just leaving a lot of really vague things and then when they ask you to draw it it's like what you just told me doesn't make sense like what what is your thoughts when you mean fire hair like what part of that is important like that their hair is made out of fire that their hair moves like fire like sometimes you just have to ask people to be very very specific or at least elaborate on what they're talking about i found it interesting that the final process product was basically civil i don't know who that is trailer wingy Cosmic Pokemon, by the way. That's someone is me. Oh, yeah, you were, the, you were the one that suggested that. I thought you weren't doing a Friday stream. My my streams for the next uh, two months are going to be all up in the air. But, yes, I was, I'm doing a Friday stream this week. Also, with that, because fire, fire is a plasma, clouds are kind of a plasma, not really, they're not plasma at all, they're just moisture, uh, mm. you could draw all of them like this, and then you just kind of decide what what's important for you. Mm, color, I guess. I'm waiting for the stream to catch up so I can see gotcha. that. <laughs> Yeah, I was curious to know how y'all do it. For a half dragon, dragon kin, I find D and D rather lazy with their scaly humans and miniature dragon heads. I mean, they're, yeah, they're they're were dragons. I also find them boring. Half dragons are way more interesting to me. Are you allowed to provide a brief elaborate for your one sentence suggestion for the stream? Like what you said about the fire hair. What do you want? I would say no. <laughs> because that defeats the purpose. Um, because if the hair is the most important part, you should be describing the hair. A fire wizard with hair that flows like fire but is not on fire right like i can see that being kind of the extension of it just don't write a paragraph you know don't write a paragraph i usually just do what i want anyway yeah that that's really the thing like if you have a very 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 specific version of the thing you want me to draw you should probably be doing a commission <laughs> these are just prompts these are just prompts for me to you know draw something I like the I think Dragonborns. I strongly dislike the wings on half dragons. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I really like the wings. Same. Um, wings and tail. Yeah, because the Dragonborns in in Five E are essentially lizard folk with breath with breath attacks, and it's like that's okay. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But they just uh, look with weak scales and a breath. They just, yeah, they just look like they just look like weird lizard folk. So they're either big kobolds, which I think kobolds could be awesome. If you made big kobolds, but my my nice. issue really is that they're dragonborn. Like I just don't like the dragonborn. I think they should all be half dragons. So, but like I said, dragonborns are a specific thing. They're were dragons, and that's totally fine. Mm. But they shouldn't be the only. They they should half dragons should be a playable race over dragonborns in my mind. Dragonborns should really just be like a, a template. 
Yeah, or dragons. I mean, luckily, the half dragon template exists. It's mm -hmm. just. Well, I personally wouldn't mind the balance issue you know, if I gave it to a fighter, for example. You know, the fighter would be really happy with the AoE suddenly. Yeah. No, I meant I just looked, took a human covered with scales and maybe put a tail or a miniature dragon head on him. Not real blending. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we're all in the same place. Like, that's that's the problem with it's. It's the same thing with like certain were creatures. It's like or like when I draw cat folk or um, Aarakocra, Like I very much want them to be a lot animalistic for it, not just. Uh, a cute anime girl with cat ears, right? Like, mm. or I put a cat head on a person. It's a cat folk. It's like, n I mean, why doesn't it? Why doesn't it have the rest of the cat body? Like, shouldn't it have the tail and the paws? Yeah. <laughs> I like that more. So with half dragons, it makes sense because there should be like the blending of the two is the kind of the interesting part of it. It's like, what co parts of dragon did they get? Whereas the dragonborn um, feels like that's kind of what they were going for, but then they just went like, I don't know, what if it's just a dragon that's a dude? And it's like, all right. Kind of lazy. It feels a little lazy to me. Where insomniac, yeah. You can't tell me being basically an alligator man with a pocket flamethrower isn't sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. The flame <laughs> breath is great. Like mechanically, they're great. I think the the story part of them is just really weird and kind of lazy. Um, I would have loved to see more because essentially the dragonborn exist because they didn't want people to have dragon powers. Like they didn't want people to be able to have wings and and stuff. It's just they simplified it down until it's just dragon aesthetic it's like eh, boring so <laughs> where's the rest of the cat every furry misses things yeah i think we're probably gonna call it there i think we're done for the day it's 2 30 i don't have much more to add to this except just like lots of scale detail or something um yep. i'm done my brain is crashing yep yeah, it's fine I'm going to work on a few little projects, get some stuff taken care of around the house, and then I might be back this afternoon just to hang out and chat. I'm not sure yet. And otherwise, uh, that's all we got. That's all we got for the week. Um, we'll be back next week, hopefully, on Wednesday. I'll put up another post on Monday so people can suggest their characters. It will be a new list, so feel free to add something to that or one that didn't get drawn this week. Uh, I'm going to try to work on some videos, but I also have a few commissions that I need to work on, so I'll probably be streaming some of that, either in Discord or on uh, Twitch. So we'll, we'll figure out how that goes. But until then, uh, stay happy, stay healthy, keep your dust on the table. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll, uh, we'll catch everybody next time, all right? Thanks, everybody.